All right, we are back with another episode of Speedruns from the Crypt, our bi-weekly spooky hot picks, and it's very fitting for the month of October. I hope you're all having a wonderful night so far, and hope you're all doing good. Uh, before we begin tonight's show, I do just want to remind you that if you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to join us over on twitch.tv slash gamesdonequick to check out our live shows, uh, starting most nights around 7 p.m. EST or Eastern. And while you're there, Hotpix is funded in part thanks to your subscription to BIS, so please consider subscribing to support future broadcasts. Anyway, the plan for tonight is to look into, I guess, the various technology used in horror games. Uh, these games in particular don't have a, I guess they have some in common, not a lot in common, but I've always been fascinated with the different types of technology and how that affects how spooky a game can be. Uh, that being said, we're going to be going right into the futuristic side of things. We're going to be going into deep space as we, uh, I guess, become a little more isolated. Our first runner and run is going to be Larksa with Alien Isolation. So take it away. Uh, hi, hi everyone. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, so I'm I'm Larksa and I'm gonna run uh, Alien Isolation uh, any percent in the category CC only, which stands for Crouch Clipping. Uh, yeah, and the run starts in novice, so I'll, I'll give a I'll give a. Oh yeah, also my commentator here is this. He's with me. Hello, everybody. Literally. <laughs> so he'll be uh, talking um, maybe a bit about the run as well. Yeah, I flew all the way to Belgium <laughs> yeah. for this run. Yeah, insane. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, I'm first going to get the settings, and then I'll give the countdown. So, three, two, one, go. <sighs> Here we go. Yeah, so, um, yeah, this run is in high FPS, like around 140 FPS, so that we can... Uh, uh, crouch clip through doors, basically. So it's very important to have a high FPS for this game, because otherwise the game won't break. There's also like an FPS category, which breaks the game even further. Uh, you don't only crouch clip, you also like, just like walk like really fast everywhere. It's like no downtime, basically. Yeah, so this run is around 20 minutes. Well, a bit more than 20 minutes, like around 30. There is a even more broken category that's like 10 minutes or something, but we're uh, gonna play the game a little bit more standard, I suppose, uh, but not 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 quite. This game is actually like 10, 15 hours casually, uh, but we're just gonna be like going straight to them in the game. Yeah, right now she's doing the intro, uh, pretty amazing intro. She's uh, gonna be getting dressed. You start out naked in this run. <laughs> And she's gonna run around and uh, talk to some people and uh, get things going. Yeah, we're gonna um, skip some dialogue. Uh, so we speed up like all the objectives in the intro because intro is quite long casually. Oh yeah, normally this run is in Italian, but I kind of forgot to put it to Italian. So we're gonna stick to English for now. <laughs> yeah, it's not a big deal. Yeah. I'm sure the viewers prefer English. Yeah. Do you want to know a weird fact about the whole Italian language thing? Tell me. So the fastest language in Alien Isolation is actually French. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It's faster by like point something seconds, but most runners just prefer Italian. Taylor. <laughs> oh, interesting. Because I, I saw a lot of French and I was like, you know, like yeah. uh, someone said, you know, put it to Italian. I was like, okay, like, uh, interesting. <laughs> so it's like the a French meme is then. The fastest. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Oh, Italian is the meme, I see. It is like bad, uh, Samuel's RNG he can normally stand like closer, but that's okay. She's not a seasoned traveler. Hypersleep may have been punishing for her. Haven't seen her. I'll go check on her. Now go back to Taylor. Yeah, so just a lot of talking to NPCs here. Uh very scripted section, so not too much you can do in terms of speeding it up. Yeah. It's probably been up for hours. All right, now we go trigger the mission for the briefing. That we have like one small strat. Uh, we can open the door here for our friend. We're gonna hold the door. Yep. There we go. In here as well. 
Oh, we're waiting for a friend to walk. So, Larksa, what got you wanting to run Alien Isolation? Um, I've always been like a really big Aliens fan. And, you know, that's just one of the big reasons why I wanted to run the game. But especially this category, because I saw how broken it was. I was like, damn. <laughs> I want to beat this game in like half an hour. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is actually a pretty easy speedrun to pick up. So if anybody, yeah. if anybody has interest, there's a... Uh, Definitely some resources out there, and you could, you could probably learn it in like a day. It's pretty straightforward. But in turn of the run being straightforward, there's so much like, <laughs> like RNG. Oh, yeah. oh goodness. <laughs> At the top level, this run is very reset heavy, from yeah. what I've heard. Yeah. There's a one or two super RNG like choke point sections, and it's like. The player doesn't even have any control. <laughs> you just you just get there and you pray. Yeah. <clears throat> so do, uh, while she gets up, you can hold Shift W and hope for a fast walk. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we got the fast walk here. Yeah. So anytime you're in a space suit, there's a. I don't know if it's RNG. I've I've heard mixed things, but. Essentially, if you hold W during the loading screen, you can run like twice as fast when you're in the spacesuit. And uh, there's one part at the end of the run where it actually saves an insane amount of time because you're in the spacesuit for like a minute or two just holding W. So, very, very important to get that if you're going for a record, but. Hopefully, she can get it and got on the first one at least. Yeah. <laughs> Here we trigger just a bunch of set pieces. Playing pretty intended so far. <laughs> Things are looking normal. Yeah, this is the first like scripted item. Uh, almost all item pickups are RNG except for this one. That's a very, very important flare. Yeah, that flare is gonna help her later on. The new strat. Elevator. <laughs> I think my uh, favorite part of the run is that the moment you get going, like in terms of doing all the tricks, it pretty much stays that way until like pretty much the end. Anyone here? <laughs> yeah. Those, like three minutes of like, all right, walking around, talking to people. Then once you get to like this part right here, it's Doesn't anything here work. It's gone. <laughs> Yeah, so she's doing a thing called crouch clipping, and uh, essentially you're just, you bind crouch to your scroll wheel, and you're doing it in a rhythm where your character, like, with each crouch, you just keep moving forward, and if you time it right, you just, like, go so far forward, you just go through the door. <laughs> and you can see it, like, <laughs> she's, she's already, like, at the halfway point of the game right now. <laughs> But the, the thing about this game works perfectly fine. You can go to whatever area and there's no like triggers or checkpoints you need to hit. It just all works. So if you if you can get somewhere, if you can get to the end of the game, you can just beat it. <laughs> so she's clips out of bounds and hits uh one of the mission triggers, I believe. And mm -hmm. yeah, now she's pretty much at like the halfway point. <laughs> it's about six hours casually skipped, no problem. We're gonna wait here. Yeah, for like crouch clipping, um, so we first like, you know, just standard crouch in front of the door before we crouch clip because we have to like break the initial barrier of the door. Just sounds very weird, it sounds crazy, but there's like a couple of barriers that you have to break through and like just initially crouching slowly in front of it like breaks the first barrier, causing you to go like really smoothly through the rest of the doors. <laughs> and you were just like wait and hope that uh yeah, so the alien uh, in alien isolation is called Steve. Uh and Steve on novice is pretty <laughs> Like, he, he, he can't see us or hear us, luckily, so he can just stand here. Steve, the official name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we all call him Steve. Okay. 
And so she's going to ride this tram, and then she's going to go to another tram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's actually quite a, like, quite a bit of waiting around uh, in the run, despite it being fast. It's a shame you can't clip through these white doors. Yeah, I keep trying. You'll get it eventually. <laughs> there you go. Do you know what, like, the little gate afterward, you can partially clip through that? Yeah. Yeah, she clipped through there, uh, clipped mm -hmm. through at that time, I think. Yeah. So funny enough with that as well, when uh, Larkso was originally going into the, um, I was trying to avoid Steve in the first tram. Yeah. Uh, right when the tram came, she could have technically done the crouch clipping there, but it's not really worth it because if you do it, if you don't do it, you die. Yeah, exactly. I've died there a few times. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, marathon safe strats. <laughs> yeah, so she has to remove this brace because otherwise the game will soft lock later, I believe. Yeah. And she's waiting for the tram anyways, so it's it doesn't waste any time, so... Gotta do it. Might as well. Yeah, next up, uh, we're gonna encounter our first humans, fellow humans, who are our enemies. We're gonna go grab the gun, and sometimes they shoot at you, that's why I heal there. Uh, yeah. The checkpoints are really brutal uh, in this run, because <laughs> you like skip through everything, so checkpoints are very, very far back. I didn't even notice there were humans here. <laughs> Well, it's a bit further than this part here. So she's just wedging her way through that big, oh. fat, invisible wall. <laughs> yeah, that's one of my favorite clips. <laughs> I just love how seamless it is sometimes. It almost looks like you're meant to go through the Yeah. <laughs> After this part, we go grab the gun in like hostile area and hopefully not get shot. <laughs> but it's on novice, so damage means uh, damage is just like a suggestion here. <laughs> oh yeah, this is a new loading area, and that's why I have to like crouch before I clip through. There you go. In the super fast category, do you even get the gun? Uh, I don't know, uh, actually. No. Oh. You just immediately go to that part of the game where you're walking like outside the space. Yeah, yeah, the space, the space walk. <laughs> yeah, because I think you you do the same thing where you go to the big door about to go to, but then after that, I think you go through the door that you'd be going through with the spacesuits. Gotcha. Oh yeah, to grab the gun there, I did something called psycho walking or psycho running. Uh, the runner psycho found this glitch. Uh, if you walk diagonally to the right, so if you walk to the right diagonally and uh, crouch uh, in like a rhythm, your footsteps will be silent, but it only works when going to the right, not mm -hmm. when going to the left. Yeah, you're basically crouching as each footstep is supposed to happen, at least. As far as I know, that's how it works. And you're just, yeah, you're muting the, the footstep audio. Yeah, the Xenomorph, Steve, listens, like he hears all the sounds. So, uh, it's a very, very important strat, especially later in the run. So yeah, this this is called the elevator, and it used to be really Ooh. horrible to go through, but there's, <laughs> that's what we were talking about with the flare. Yeah. By placing a flare on the ground, it 
when you clip into the door, it like pushes you further forward, which makes it way easier to get through. And uh, yeah, now she's at mission 18. The end is basically. Pretty much the end of the game. <laughs> That's a right now really good job in the elevator. I know people like you go into that wall and it takes forever to actually get through, so. Yeah. <laughs> that also, new strat is really good. <laughs> yeah, on this part here, she doesn't actually have this tool to hack the panels, but apparently the tr the trigger or the check to s for the game to see if you have the hacking tool is right in front of it. So if you actually interact with it from the side, you can just use it. Like, you can just use the hacking tool. It's very weirdly programmed, but it's good that it works that way. Yeah. So. <laughs> and that guy on the ground can actually grab you. He's a, like a sleeper robot. But luckily, if you're looking at them, they can't grab you. So. Gonna throw this flare here to distract the xenomorph. Gonna make a marathon save because this is the hardest part in the run, honestly. Right. Uh, for reference, um, this mission we are pretty much on chapter 18, mission 18. Uh, right now, once Watch is heading back down, as we like, I think like four, like three aliens kind of wandering around the area. So hopefully it goes well. Yeah, so uh, that's Steve. We're just gonna run past and uh, hope he doesn't chase us. <laughs> uh, yeah, this part is incredibly hard. Um... Like, your psycho running has to be perfect, and your turns are very important. Because in the psycho running, when you turn to the left, you make noise. So, yeah, like your footsteps are silent, but not when you turn. But we have to turn, you know, to go down the staircase. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't look like it's really that complicated. You know, you're just running down a staircase, but like... It's just very minor movements. If you make a footstep, Steve will hear you and he'll kill you before you can get to where you need to go. And uh, yeah, there's been some, you know, this game's been ran at a few different marathons and uh, some runners have had a really hard time here. So hopefully she'll get it in a few tries. Yeah. I die here on average like three times, so don't worry. We're, we're <laughs> like, yes. I'll get it eventually. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty much like the hardest part of the run, so. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. also, um, mm -hmm. it was mentioned earlier at the RNG, uh, not only this section, there's gonna be another section later that uh, hopefully won't be too many. So this is why the estimate, like, if it seems high, it's trust on. it's, it's accounting. Wait. Yeah, the estimate is basically because of this part, and this part alone. <laughs> Yay, she made it! Alright, third try. <laughs> oh man, that's stressful. First try every trip. Yeah, <laughs> first third try. Let's go. <laughs> but yeah, the trick there, um, because right before the run, I was talking to the world record holder, and he gave me like a really interesting tip for that part. Uh, like the last small flight of stairs, uh, you know, right before you get the spacesuit, you have to like basically not turn. Like if you turn there, it's over, and I had no idea because none of the guys really tell you that. <laughs> yeah, this game has a lot of, like, miscons. Like, every, you ask a runner about a certain trick and they'll all tell you something different. <laughs> yeah. It just works. Yeah. yeah. So, now there's a lot of RNG here. We need to pray for facehuggers and pray for a flare. 
And pray for shotgun shells, even more important. <laughs> yeah, well, we did say this is one of the hardest parts. There are uh, what the RNG parts we're ta we were talking about is coming up here. She, her shotgun only has four shells, and that's enough to basically beat the game. And if she misses any of the shots, uh, it's it's rip run at least at the top level. Uh, so she needs to shoot this shotgun in a way where this, you know, the the spread hits both of these facehuggers in one shot. Mm -hmm. uh, she doesn't have enough ammo to kill, you know, to shoot each one individually, unless she gets very lucky and gets a drop. But ammo in this game is very RNG, so mo most of the time you're not going to have a second shot for this. And even if you do, it's obviously way slower. Nice. Okay, so she got that. Now there's another scripted facehugger that's going to show up. Needs to shoot. Okay, nice. Wait, okay, there's also a new strat here, which I didn't do. It's called Hugger Boost. So you, like, uh, shoot the hugger preemptively, and you, like, teleport forward, which saves some time. Yeah, you shoot it as you get grabbed or something like that, and it teleports you forward, which while you're crouching here in this tunnel, you know, you move, you're moving so slowly. You, uh, it, uh it, sa it actually saves like five to six seconds. Oh, Steve. And also the uh, the flare trick right there, by throwing the flare early, you much break the Xenomorph AI so you can just run through mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so funny to me. <laughs> it's easy too, and it barely looks like anything, but yeah. yeah. Another small strat there. Let's see shotgun shells. Shotgun shells. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so she's gonna clip through the ladder here. There you go. Oof, that one is scary. If you die there, you have to do the hugger shot all over again. Yeah, so there is actually fall damage. Um, but if you lean while you're falling, it like Just resets it down. or something. I'm not I'm not really sure. A little skip there. That one was always like so clutch. <laughs> the tram. <clears throat> Man, this train scared the crap out of me on my first playthrough. <laughs> I died through this train a lot in my first playthrough, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah, here comes the last like uh, face hugger RNG parts. Thankfully, there is a checkpoint, like, mm -hmm. right when you enter the vent here. So that's, well, that's very nice. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't know if you could even run this game in a marathon. Oh, and you got a first try. Yep, these things kind of, like, Beautiful. block your path. That's annoying. Yeah, so this is, like, the RNG reset point of the run. Um, I guess both of them are. I'm, I'm not 100% yeah. sure, but... Yeah, the facehuggers don't spawn the same way every time, so, so sometimes they'll be split up and you, you just can't even shoot them both, mm -hmm. and it's just uh, it's a reset. <laughs> I love the fact that we, uh, we pretty much talked about that whole thing, like, in preparation for the run, not during the run, and then she just gets it first try. <laughs> <laughs> it's God, God gaming right there. <laughs> Honestly, this has been pretty good. Yeah. <clears throat> the part from the stairs does been pretty, pretty good. What do you need me to do? Get up the airlock. Curious what the final time is going to be. It's probably pretty close to your PB, actually. Yeah. Right now, for reference, you're about a 22.35 in RTA. Okay. Oh, RTA even. I see. Yeah. Loading times are really slow <laughs> in this game. Oh, yeah. So here in the FPS category, CC only FPS, you can go very, f like, like you don't have to, like, w slow walk here. Uh, you go very fast here. So. Yeah, well, I, you're not even wearing the space suit. Right? Yeah. Don't you just, like, <laughs> yeah, you just, like, the wall? run through it. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> also, I just realized something. Hold on. So I, I think last time you were on the show, mm -hmm. it was back around, I think, March or so. Yeah. Or April. 
Didn't you get like the really difficult Little Nightmares 2 trick first try? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the hunter skip. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how you manage that. Like, these are like the things that I've seen runs, I've seen live attempts of this game, that game, and there's the things that always reset the run and then you just first try. Yeah, the, uh, the stress and practice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she she does great that. under pressure. <laughs> Apparently. Okay, there's one last, there's two last tricks still in the run, and that's GG. We have the the pistons that we need to, uh, we can do, do them like two by two, so not f uh, one at a time. And then we have like fast walk, and that's basically it. Yeah, so the fast walk isn't actually during this part, that was a... Uh... A little bit wrong on my part. <laughs> yeah, it's but like yeah, right. It's, it's yeah. after this. Mm -hmm. They're in the, the loading screen. Yeah. Hey, I get my shout outs here. Big shout out to the Alien Station Spirit Community. They're super helpful, by the way. They're such a good community. <laughs> and uh, also a big shout outs to my, to my chat because they probably, some of them set an alarm to watch this run, so <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Chris. Sweet. Yeah. And thank you for this for flying all the, the way uh, over here to do commentary. That's just insane. Yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> Honestly, I'm seeing a lot of your emotes in chat, so they definitely came out Aww. to support you. You thank love to you. see it. Key cards. Yeah, there's a speedrun strat here. If you interact and look like left and right at the same time, you gotta pull these uh, these pistons out or pins. And if she does it right, she'll trick the game into thinking she's doing two pins at once. We'll see if she got it here. Yep. So yeah, you can see the one on the left gets pulled out at the same time. And uh, that actually saves quite a bit of time. And you can do it on both, so. Did she get them both? Uh, normally, yeah, yeah, normally. I think I hit the trigger. Sometimes it won't show up. Uh, yeah, I, I couldn't tell. Oh, yeah, you got there you it. go. Nice. Hey. <laughs> Yeah, this, this run is a lot of uh, tricking the game into thinking things, I've <laughs> noticed. <laughs> Love how faithful this part is, like, to the movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this part is really cool. I don't mind watching this part over and over. <laughs> <laughs> this whole game is honestly so faithful to the movie, it's mm -hmm. crazy. Okay, now comes the last part. Uh, we need to hold Shift W and hope we get Fast Walk. How much time does Fast Walk save again? Uh, I'm on my way up I don't know, bridge. I think like four seconds, four or five seconds. Yeah, we didn't get Fast Walk, sadly. Ugh. But yeah, for Fast Walk, it's like, you know, you hold W during the loading screen and you pray. Um, yeah, it's, no one has gone that's like consistent yet. There's like some, Relaine? um, uh, there's like some strat to it to do it like right after the loading wheel or right before, but yeah, there's like no consistency for fa fast walk. <laughs> yeah, and what f fast walk essentially just lets you move at double movement mm. speed, just like stacks it twice for some reason. Yeah. Bye bye, Steve. <laughs> bye bye. And uh, yeah, that's that all isolation. When's <laughs> <laughs> time? Uh, that was a fast run. And it's time, right? Yeah, and time, yes. <laughs> all right, there we go. Oh, God, I missed a few seconds. Oh, goodness. Oh, no. Oh, Hi, yeah, few yeah. Seconds. <laughs> uh, it's looking about like, a, I think, a 28 something. Yeah, there we go. Uh, looks like. It's probably like a 28 flat, because I saw a few cents run over. 
but GG, it was a great run. <laughs> yeah, that was so really good. Hard, yeah. huh? We already uh, did some shout outs, but uh, if anyone wanted to check you out on Twitch and watch more Larksa, where can they find you on anywhere? Uh, Twitch.tv slash Larksa. Yeah. <laughs> Catch me live. All right, that works. <laughs> nice uh, and easy. Yeah. As yeah, I want to thank you both for being here. Uh, it was a great time watching Alien Isolation. It's always, oh, I think, one of my favorite horror games to watch, especially as a speed run. Mm -hmm. And uh, you don't always see any percent CC only. A lot of times you get to see the longer category, which is great. But sometimes I like being able to see a game like this get absolutely broken. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, before we do head on off to the next few runs on our docket, uh, yeah, both of you have anything else you'd like to add? Um. Uh, no, do you want something to add? Well, no, actually not. I, I'm glad I woke up in time because uh, I set my alarm at 4 instead of, you know, <laughs> at 3.30. Yeah, uh, I guess I'll just say, if this is your first time ever watching the game, uh, definitely, like, the, this, the speedrun is obviously nothing like how it is casually. The casually of this game is amazing. It's, like, 15 hours. It's really long. It's mm. really freaking good. So yeah. definitely yeah. check it out if... Uh, your first time seeing the game <laughs> all right well that being said we're gonna be gearing up for our next game i do want to thank you both for being here again both the uh, larksa and distortion and uh we're going to go over to a quick wellness break this is the time to stand up touch your toes stretch your legs do what you need uh before we do that though i do just want to say that frame fatales games committee applications are currently open if you would like to uh, join that feel free to go to gamesdonequick.com to apply to help out with the uh, frame fatales event Anyway, that being said, we'll be right back, and our next game will be Bioshock. So we are back. All right, we are back from the break. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that amazing Alien Isolation run. Uh, despite the title name in terms of isolation, we never really felt too isolated with that run. Larks did an amazing job, and she, like, just sped through that whole game. Uh, we even talked, I know, before the run began, like, oh, this part's going to be, like, you know, I think that's a bit higher. Apparently, we didn't even need it. Uh, she just kind of blitzed through that, and that's always a great thing to see. Continuing on to the theme of tech, we've gone to the depth, or I guess the uh, the far outreach of outer space. We were able to see aliens and all the sci-fi tech that comes with that. But what about the other end of things? We always talk about space. But we never talk about the oceans. I love the oceans, and uh, this is actually one of my favorite games coming up. Uh, and this category is going to be a bit of a different twist as well with it. Uh, going into our next world of tech, we're going to be taking a deep, deep dive into our own oceans as we go into Bioshock. In addition, though, we, while this game has been on GDU Hotfix a few times, uh, Benedictator is going to be giving it an interesting twist. Anyway, that being said, here is Bioshock with Benedictator. Take it away. Hello, everybody. Yeah, as he said, Benedictator here, ready to do some Bioshock. Um, and we are doing the no major skips category. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with that, it's uh, just any of the major skips, which is kind of a subjective idea. But I guess for us, like major skips is any skip that like skips past a significant amount of gameplay. I don't know. So there's like a few skips that that basically skip the entire level, and we and we skip all those skips. Um, and it's it was three skips that we avoided. But uh, KPC, I'll give a little shout out to KPC Zombie. Um, within the last month or so, he found um, a, a new... It's just we It's the weirdest skip ever. Um, but we can uh, clip through walls. So now, like, almost every level has a major skip. So we skip we skip all those in this run, too. So it doesn't affect this run. But but now instead of skipping three skips, we're skipping, like, you know, six or seven or eight or, or something like that. A lot of them. Anyways. Um, but yeah, here we go. I'll go ahead and get started. I'll give you a little countdown. Uh, we'll start in five, four, three, two, one, go. All right. Uh, so this is kind of an, an intro level. The plane crash um, is basically just us getting to the bathysphere. Uh, and then we get to watch a little cutscene, And then we get to, like, intro level part two. But yeah, we'll go swimming. Nothing too crazy in this little intro level. It's, it's just one trick that I hope I don't goof up on. It's a really easy trick. Um, but, you know things happen so we'll see we'll see we'll see if we can nail it i should be able to but every once in a while every once in a while i'll goof up on it all right see if we can walk in the dark without doing some bad movement no that was just fine all right so here comes our first skip what we're gonna try to do is activate the lever of this bathysphere and and jump out and land outside of this uh bathysphere there we go we got it this only saves like 
couple seconds maybe. Um, but what we're doing right now, so so we jumped backwards, and while we were in the air, we hit the lever to, to close the door on this thing. We land outside of it, and the game just gets confused, like, ah, I don't know what to do, and it just puts you on top of the bathysphere instead of sliding you inside of it. Um, so we just get to kind of surf around on this thing, um, and we can kind of look in all 360 degrees, so we get to see things that the devs wouldn't normally want us to see, like this square chunk that we just end up floating through in the middle of the ocean. Um, but yeah, the, the reason why this saves time is, is when we slide into the chamber at the end of this cutscene, the bathysphere rises, and when your character model, like, reaches a certain height, that's when the level will transition over to the next level, and since we're on top of it, we, we reach that height uh, slightly earlier, so, yeah, saves a teeny bit of time. But yeah, we get to see cool things like these animals, which are just frozen. Normally, there'd be, like, a little screen in front of you that you wouldn't be able to see all this. But yeah, we see squid boys and crab boys. Zoom! Now he's now he's ready. We woke him up. He was sleeping. But yeah, yeah. Here we go. Let's rock and roll. And this is a pretty epic like intro. I don't know. It's kind of a bummer that we have like this like four minute cutscene right at the beginning of the run. Um, but all in all, it's like a pretty cool intro cutscene. So it could be worse, I guess. One of the fun parts, though, and I love always showing it off, uh, I like how the fish just stop once they're off camera. Yeah. And we yeah, can look at them it's... now, because... Uh... <laughs> Let's see if we can find them anywhere. Uh, not not right now. Um, I think the whale think... shark does, right? I'm pretty sure this whale beneath us will stop moving, so we should be able to see that in a second. He stopped getting paid. He, he's no longer on yeah, the clock. Yeah, there he is. He's, yep. Time for him to snooze now. He's, he's done. He's spent. <laughs> He did his yeah, dramatic entrance. It's kind of funny, like, and, you know, why, if, if they're not in the frame, why why continue to make them move? But it is a goofy thing that we get to see. But here we are, as soon, basically as soon as we slide into this chamber, we're at the height we need to, so it starts transitioning over. All right. Now we kind of, uh, this is like the second, like, intro level. I call it intro level because we don't actually deal with any of the big daddies or the little sisters that, that comes into the, the level after this one. Um, but we do get to do some really cool tricks in this level. A really funky one. The Electro Bolt skip is really funky. It's kind of annoying, but it's cool. And one of the kind of cool things about this, like, so if, if you've ever played Bioshock Infinite or, or Bioshock 1, so, like, when this Spider Splicer, who's chopping this guy up, when she, like, starts talking to you, she'll say, Is it someone new? Um, and likewise, in Bioshock Infinite, once you take your little rocket ship up into Columbia, you meet this priest, like, right at the beginning of the game, and, and he says the same thing, is it someone new? So it's kind of like a cool throwback. There you go. It's like a cool throwback to the original Bioshock. Um, but yeah, we'll let this, let this uh, splicer beat up on our bathysphere for a little bit, and then we'll be able to actually start moving. Now I've got a little a guest who's who's hanging out, um, who I'm sure is gonna pop up and say hi at the end of my run because he always does. But I'll, I'll leave I'll leave that to be a surprise. You guys can be in suspense for that. All right. Got it. Got it. So that spider splicer who was beating up on our bathysphere was standing there and, and just hopped away, basically. But there's kind of a cool thing I'll show you. She. Her character model, it, it shouldn't be there, but it's on top of the bathysphere here. And, like, you'll see it just, like, blip away in a second. Bleep. Kind of a goofy thing. And I always like to point this out. This is, like, a levitating piece of paper that's always there. I don't know why that piece of paper just levitates, but it does. Sometimes paper just levitates. We've all been there. There's, like, a little bit of RNG coming up when we walk up this next staircase. Um, grab this. Boom. If we jump up to the left side of this, and this thing damages a little bit, hopefully this guy jumped. Oh, that was really, really nice. Really nice. Sometimes he likes to hang back and, and not move forward, but that saves a little bit of time. So we do a little bit of uh, trickery right here by pressing a few buttons and uh, grabbing the electro bolt, but immediately pulling up this the save menu, and then we can load that save that we just made. And we're gonna grab this electro bolt, but we're gonna hop away from the cutscene, um, and we can avoid we can avoid the cutscene that would normally trigger there. That was pretty smooth. 
Um, but the game is, for the rest of this level, is going to be trying to suck us back into that Gather's Garden. So we, we set our hop to scroll, and we have to do this weird, kind of annoying jumping mechanic to prevent the game from, like, sucking us backwards towards that machine. I will kind of say, though, for, uh, for good news, because this always gets asked in this game, uh, this only lasts for this level. Once uh, Ben Decay yes. gets to the next <laughs> level, it'll go away. It's only this level. <laughs> Thank goodness. I couldn't imagine doing this through the whole game. Oh, that'd be terrible. <laughs> that would be a nightmare. <laughs> that would change this run significantly. It would be much less fun. All right, I'm having some pretty good movement so far. This, like, especially with this level, the movement can be really tricky just because of this weird hopping mechanic, um, and it's going really well so far. Wow, all right. Wow, that might, that, it might be the fastest I've ever gotten into this elevator before. That was... Super clean. Oh, I'm right. Kind of, I'm kind of proud yeah. of that. I'm kind of, there's still enough of the level to mess things up. Oh, of course. <laughs> we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. as well, um, for any of you who may not know this, uh, the elevator there, you, you can't, normally if you try jumping in, when it pulls you back, it kind of puts you at an angle where you might constantly be hitting the top. So it's a lot of like having to just make sure you mass jump to try to force yourself in there. But Ben just slid on in there and it was very well calculated. Yeah, I was pretty happy with that. And it's kind of the same thing with this door right here. Like, it can be annoying to hop through. Um, just the angle you have to hop through it is weird, but I did it nice and smooth there. Well, I might actually have to wait up here. So if you get up to this part fast enough, um, you actually have to wait for a second. Otherwise, there we go. You have to wait till your reticle pops up. Otherwise, you'll soft lock the game. And that, I think, is the fastest I've ever gotten up to this point uh, as well. So this right. is another spot. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about this. This is another spot where we do like a save load thing, where it um, allows us to skip another cutscene that's going to play uh, in this next section. So we do a little quick save to, to avoid cutscenes. All right. Him nice. We're gonna zap these splicers here so they don't bug us during this next section. And I'm gonna pull out my pistol. We're gonna trigger that alarm and hopefully we shoot this splicer. It's not a hard thing to do, but if you miss it. Oh, there we go. Got it with a second shot. If you miss it, it causes all sorts of strife. So I try to shoot these guys up on the stairwell because it like triggers the next phase of this a little quicker, but you know, it only it's Pretty negligible amount of time saved or lost, so I'm not too tore up if I miss it. All right. Oh no. Other than that little section at the end, this this went excellently. I mean, and even that little section at the end was was a pretty negligible time loss. So this has overall been a very good level for me. To medical. And we can do another weird trick. Normally there's a cutscene that plays at the end of this level, but if we just zap the door, it just takes us out. And we just leave. I love how that's a thing. Yeah, it's super weird. I don't know. It's, it's kind of a weird little bug. Um, so this, this little hacking sequence, we don't do a whole lot of hacking in this game, but this hacking sequence will always be the same if it's like a fresh load of the game. If I were to hack this and then like reset the run, um, this hack sequence would be different, but since it's always the same, we can do it real fast like that. Okay, take her out. All right, so this is the first, what I would call like real level where we have to deal with big daddies and little sisters. Um, that's more of like a casual play thing because we are not gonna really deal with them in this run, except for one big daddy that we'll deal with. All right, we'll trigger this little go sequence. Then we're on like a little bit of a timer. So we can like go kill some enemies and loot them um, while we're waiting for this to, to finish up. But there we go. Now we should be good to go. All right. Now we're on our way to get like a really important plasma for this game, Incinerate, which is basically going to be used for um, death warps. And I grab some armor piercing rounds right there. That's going to be important for a section later on in this in this level. But yeah. Incinerate and Telekinesis are going to be our two, like, big important plasmids for this run. Like, take her out so she doesn't body block us on our way out of here. Alright, we got Incinerate. Take those guys out so they don't body block us. I like to get my pistol out because sometimes this guy... Oh, there he is. There he is. Sometimes he likes to body block you like that. A lot of, lot of body blocking in this game if, if things aren't going well. 
But I like to put some fire on the ground there just so those guys don't follow me. That's that's what I got going on there. Um, so if they if they follow me, they'll walk into the fire and, and burn themselves. Um, I picked up that audio diary, which is very important. It's not necessarily that audio diary, but you need to get an audio diary um, to, to do a lot of these uh, diary skips that we'll do throughout the run. And that's just that's the one that's most immediately on our route, so that's the one we always grab. But I've got telekinesis. As I said, that's also a very important one for some tricks, but it's also like the most OP plasmid in the game. Um, you can basically one-shot enemies uh, with your telekinesis. We're gonna get our telekinesis out, we're gonna get our armor crease rounds out, we're gonna heal up, and we are gonna do a fling. So this fling is gonna allow us to um, jump over a Vita chamber, or jump over a trigger, which, which we'll be able to skip like a respawn point. So there we go, got that first try, that was nice. There we go. Pretty clean so far. Oh, I didn't. I didn't hit the the look trigger to cause him to spawn. There we go. There we go. We're gonna reduce our health here a little bit. Oh, I wish I would have reduced it a little more, but that's not the end of the world. Okay. So normally this door stays locked, but if we can hit him with this. Oh, I moved at the last second. Oh well. That'll lose a little bit of time. If we hit him with those that ammo there, um, we can open the door uh, early. I kind of goofed it up a little bit. Ooh, ooh. I'm going to actually heal up. I didn't want to lose that much health. I don't know if I hit my invincibility frames yet or not. Um, so I'm just going to play safe and assume I have. All right. That's like, if you mess it up, you just have to wait for that point for the door to open. Oh, I was trying to get his body there. If you can catch his body with telekinesis before the... Um, before the uh, before it hits the ground, then you can just grab his body and, and pull it to you. And, and there's a key on his body. That's that's what we're getting there. Right now is a uh, just a general question. Since most of the, for the most part, this rest play uh, I guess be speedrun rather straight. Um, yeah. For no major skips, what exactly are we not allowed to do? So there's a couple of flings. Uh, there's a fling in Arcadia that basically just takes us right to the. We, we get to skip the whole level. There's a fling in Fort Frolic that, again, basically skips the entire level. And in one of the last levels, um, there's a little skip that we can do that lets us basically jump over a trigger that would lock us in place, and we're able to sneak through a door that takes us right to the end of the level. Um, so those traditionally are the main skips that we that we skipped in the past. But now with this, uh, this new clipping uh, trick that was found, um, there's a whole bunch of extra uh, wall clippings that we avoid as well so it's just it's just a handful of, of different tricks that we avoid um, otherwise it's it's other than those main those main tricks it's, it's basically the same run so we are gonna uh, fight this big daddy coming up and we don't really care we're gonna fight the big daddy and save the little sister and it's not like we really care about the sister or the big daddy but it actually allows us to take advantage of a different glitch um, later on in the level where you at, little sister? I know you're around here somewhere. There she is. So there's a skip coming up where we're gonna hit, like hit the hitbox of an enemy, but it's like the enemy will be invisible. She won't be there, but we'll be hitting her hitbox, which allows us to um, basically skip out of an, an area a little early. So we're gonna hit him a little bit, but we're gonna wanna grab his rocket there. Oh, got it. And this is what that big daddy little sister interaction lets us do. The lady's hitbox is right up there. We hit it. And now we can skip past this area. Normally we'd have to like listen to a whole bunch of dialogue by Peach there, um, but we can just skip past it and go on to the next area. And so this, as long as you do this fast enough, this um, phase a handful of seconds, you can walk up and around, but the fast way to do this is to fling uh, up and over this area. I want you to rotate for me, Barrel. Oh, there we go. Be nice to me, Barrel. It's rolling all over the place. There we go. Oop. That's kind of a tough fling. There's like, there's like some physical geometry that you have to avoid uh, for that fling. So you have to do it just so. Um, it can be a little tough for for newer folks, but I feel like I've got a pretty good handle on that one. All right. So let's hope we get our, our camera skip. The camera skip's not too tough to do, but you got to be quick. So the main the main objective of this level is that we're taking pictures of these spider splicers for Peach, and after we get those pictures, he's gonna let us uh, through to the end of the level. Um, but we can take a picture of this guy twice. 
Oh, nope, I missed it. We'll have to do it normally. Slow cameras, slow camera. Um, but yeah, but if you turn and take a picture of him fast enough before that little objective marker pops up, you can do, um, you can just collect two, two pictures and, and be done with this level a little early. There's Spider Splicer 2 that we need. And we'll go for our third one. Right here. Got him. Oop, didn't need to do that. I always uh, love the fact as well that if you know the Splicers are spawning, you can just instantly finish the mission. Right, I know. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. All right. I know what you're up to. Oh, thanks, guy. I guess. Get our invincibility frames, come over here, and we're gonna do a death warp in this corner and bring us back down to Peach since we got all of our research for him. Now you'll see um, some of the audio diary skips. So as soon as this objective marker pops up, oop, there it is. We can oop, play a radio message and then we can play an audio diary. Oh, there we go. I kind of goofed that up a little bit, but there we go. But yeah, we can uh, normally we'd have to listen to a whole bunch of dialogue before this door behind us um, opens up. Oops. We can do some trickery and make sure that they open up faster. So I dropped that grenade launcher. So when, when I interacted with that little thing that I just interacted with, it took all my weapons away. But if we just hold our grenade launcher like that and wait till after it takes our weapons away, we can just have it here. And we don't really use the grenade launcher for now. We, we get all our weapons back after this fight, but the nice thing about it is it um, allows us to get more grenades, which which is useful for later on in the run. But if we stand here and look in this direction, we can ensure that Peach will always spawn to our left. Ooh, there we go. One shot him with super OP telekinesis and fight is over. <laughs> That's kind of a short, a silly short hop. All right. Melt that ice, we're gonna get the only weapon upgrade that we really care about. Grenade launcher damage increase. Melt that ice and we can get out of here. Also, I love that the uh, the game just decides, yeah, you probably got the shotgun. Here you go, you can have it back. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, I have the shotgun, which I haven't picked up. Yeah, it's kind of goofy. Well, that's that level. This is, this is like a, kind of like a transitional level, like a cutscene level, it's very short. Um, even if you just played the game casually, this is a very, very short level. Um, it's just, it's just story stuff. Boink. We hop on, uh, when we're in puddles of water. We go a little bit faster if we do that. Um, so we have a setting called, we have a V-Sync setting turned on, um, in this game, because it allows us to do those flings. But for some reason, it causes that one platform that I was just walking up, like, you walk up it at the snail's pace. Um, so we hop it, uh, excuse me, hop up it like that. So that we can save speed. Nice. All right, so we're gonna do a cool little quick save trick here. We're gonna quick save and uh, hit the use button, and we're gonna be able to start moving backwards as the level is like reloading, and we can slide through that door before it locks, and we can just carry on through the level. Normally, we'd have to watch this big long um, cutscene where Atlas talks to us, but we can just we can just move right on past. Pow. Hi, Atlas. What's going on, buddy? Atlas is kind of like your guide throughout this game. He's your buddy, kind of. This, uh... We can play an audio diary and then hit those doors. Normally, oh, that's being mean to me. Normally, these doors don't open until a bunch of dialogue plays, but we can just play an audio diary and skip past it and, and open it all up anyways. So this is the first level. This is where we would do our first major skip, or traditionally, this is where we would do our first major skip. Um, but we're, we're gonna actually play through it. Ain't that just like Ryan? Ain't that just like Ryan? Come on, lock. There you go. So you can do kind of a big thing about this game. I call it Bioshock Snap when you get the camera. Like, if you're playing on, like, a casual, like, hard difficulty playthrough, um, camera research is actually pretty vital to get like damage bonuses and you get certain tonics, etc. We, for the most part, don't really care about it except for this one tonic, which is a sports boost, which allows us to move faster. Um, and we get it from these thuggish splicers that I'm taking a picture of right here. There it is. All right. We're going to grab this box. We're going to do a fling with this box in a little bit. I'm going to place the box right here. Oops. 
There we go. We'll come back to that box in a little bit. We're gonna have to collect some components to build this Lazarus Vector eventually here. And we need to get... Oh, I need your body, son. We need to get the components from those specific types of enemies in order to build our thing. Um, I'm gonna wanna start reducing my health. I'm gonna be doing a uh, death warp coming up soon. Don't body block me, lady. That is very rude. And this is where we would normally do a fling over that little trigger that spits out that green poison there and um, and uh, locks locks the door to the end of the level. But since we're doing no major skips, we're not going to do that that trick. All right. So now we're going to grab this box that I placed here earlier and get ready to do our our uh, fling. I'm gonna fire this box at this enemy and hope that the box doesn't go flying. All right, perfect, perfect. Ooh, I thought I almost, I thought I didn't fling far enough for a second. All right, that was fairly clean. That was fairly clean, pretty happy with that. It was. There we go. Well, that's Arcadia part one, we'll be back. So this is Farmer's Market. Normally, we don't even step foot in this level during a normal run just because we, we skip our, the whole Arcadia level. So this is a, a level that's totally unique to, to this run. I, would, I shouldn't say this. We, we go through this level on like all collectibles and stuff too, but this versus the any percent run. So mainly what this level is is just co collecting components for this Lazarus Vector that we need. We know those chlorophyll solutions from that enemy and this enemy. And we need this water. And we're getting it all, and we're getting it all good. Oop. We need to get this, uh, these enzymes from, from these, from bee spit. That's what we're getting. That's what we're collecting right here. Oops, I'm at the cactus. I hopped too far. There we go. We get some from that. We get some from that. We get some from this. And that's all the enzyme samples we need. We are fully enzymed. That's a word I just made up right now. All right. We're getting prepared for a death warp that's coming up soon. I don't want to lose too much health quite yet. Collect that water. Collect that water. Do a little more fire damage. There we go. Water. Water. Good, good, good. All right, we got all the things. We got all the things. We're gonna shoot this lady with a shotgun as soon as we exit this. Oh, she's not where I want her to be. Oh, there we go. It's a guy this time. Usually it's usually it's a gal. We're going to reduce all of our health and get ready for a death warp as soon as this level um, loads in, basically. And we can actually get killed and, and start respawning in a, a Vita chamber before that door even opens. There we go. Now we're gonna collect our last, our last supply for uh, for this uh, laser specter that we need to make. I like to take a picture of these guys. We can get a sports boost number two and move a little faster. Put some fire on the ground there so those guys following us hopefully uh, take some damage. They're still gonna body block a little bit, I'm sure. Oh no, I made it through. They're pretty smooth. That was nice. Usually they like to body block me pretty bad, but we cruised right on through. I'll take it. All right, now we gotta meet, get to go meet uh, Julia Langford. We'll fight a, wa a wave of enemies and we'll uh, create our Lazarus Vector. Things are happening. Put some fire on the ground for any enemies that might want to try to follow me. They walk into it and just light themselves on fire like that. All right, send it through the Numo. What do we got? What's my code? 9457. Okay. We'll walk through this door. Here's a little dialogue. We're gonna turn around and go collect a thing or two while uh, her and Andrew Ryan are talking. Oh, bad hop. That's sad. We'll lose a few seconds having to walk around. Normally, you can hop through that window. It's like. Hi. 
kind of a tricky hop. Not really. It's, it's actually pretty easy, but it's also easy enough to, to goof it up. Thankfully, it doesn't lose any, like, significant, significant amount of time. Just gotta walk around instead of walking through that window. All right, we got all the things we need. Now we're just gonna wait for this door to open. All right. Now we'll go get our thing, 94.57. I think, cool. Now we get to just do some waiting. I'll hack this real quick and um, get a auto hack there. I've cracked the vector. We need to just chill and wait for the next little objective thing to pop up like that, right when she says honeybee spit. There it is. Oh no. I'm missing a thing. What am I missing? I need to go find a um another chlorophyll solution. I must have accidentally not looted one of the bodies. That's alright, we can we can get this. We'll lose a little time walking around. Oh. Hopefully this this body will have it for us. We'll see. Oh, I thought she was gonna spawn for us. Yeah, we need to get uh, a Houdini splicer. Um, there it is. You should have what I need. There it is. Yeah, I must have accidentally just not looted one of the bodies that I killed. Because um, it's not like a random thing. You should have all the components you need when you get to that point. But apparently, I, I killed one of the enemies and just didn't pick it up. I was moving too fast. I was being too speedy. All right. There we go. Thankfully, that Houdini Splicer decided to spawn right there and made life a little easier for us. All right. Now that we got that thing, it's the the Lazarus Vector is, is being made right now, and so we're just gonna fight a uh, a wave of. Oh, did we get our? Oh, that's rude. Okay, there we go. I was gonna say it didn't give me my uh, my proximity mines like it usually does, but it did. I just had to wait. Yeah, so like I say, we just have to wait for this Lazarus Vector to get built, and we like fight like three ways of enemies while that's happening. I like to place a grenade there, stick your grenade. As soon as that door opens, um, three splicers are gonna run on out of there, and they'll basically just get um, killed immediately uh, when that door opens. That proximity grenade will just go off. All right. We just wait. We just wait for that door to open. As soon as that door opens, then basically the wave of enemies will start. There it is. All right. So now we just sit here and wait for the waves of enemies to come through. Oh, I hear somebody. And you get to see how powerful telekinesis is like i say it just basically one shots everything so we just yeet to our heart's content here all the eating and the ragdoll physics in this game are, are really good so that's kind of another fun thing about bioshock is you get to see the the ragdoll um, physics in action all right there's wave one done I'm just hang out and wait for the next wave to start I like to move, you can like, wing their bodies around like this too. Whee! You're worthless. That's rude. I'm not worthless. Like certain objects in this game do a lot of damage too. Like bodies are always really good to, to eat at enemies, but hats, hats for some reason will basically always one shot enemies as well. And like suitcases, briefcases, stuff like that. Oh, there you are. All right, there's wave two. There's Gotta wait for the third third wave here. Oh, somebody's coming after me still. There we go. Finishing Minerva's Den. Good for you. Minerva's Den is really great. That might might be the best little bit of Bioshock content that's ever been created. Don't run too far, guy. I need to kill you. There we go. Oh, 
saw somebody. There we go. Where are you? There you are. Oh, he ran away. There we go. All right. There's that part all done. Now we just get to complete the Lazarus Vector and get out of this level. Boop. All right. You can never get out of this door before it shuts. It's kind of sad. You want to. You so badly just want to get out of that door as it's shutting, but you never quite make it fast enough. Sometimes it's good to carry a body or like an object to eat at enemies if they want to body block you, but it should be pretty much clear on our way out here. I'd stare to the farmer's market. We already went through the farmer's market, guy. All right, here's Fort Frolic coming up. This is another level that we would basically do a fling and just skip right to the end, um, which is kind of a bummer because this is probably like the best level in the game. We get to meet Sander Cohen, who is a wonderful NPC. He's absolutely crazy, and he's very fun. You're almost there. The but we are gonna do, oh, oh, I'm walking into a wall, apparently. We are gonna do is uh, start reducing our health and get ready for a death warp coming up here. I'll wait a little bit so I don't hit my invincibility frames too early. There we go. We'll do a death warp right here. Pew. We just want to trigger this whole cutscene. That's all we're doing over here. That's why we move over here and do a death warp. Now we're basically ready to, to move on. We'll take these guys out. Oh, I don't want your mask. I want your body. Hey, give me your body. There we go. You can use bodies to like trigger these trap uh, trap wires so that you're not electrocuting yourself with them, which is nice. Oh, I didn't, I didn't hit that guy. There we go. There we go. I like to do a little gambling there. I think you pretty much always win your first one. Yep, there we go. Got my $25. This is one of the few doors that you can actually crouch under to have to get through it faster. Most doors just open fast enough where you don't have to worry about it. Uh, so the whole point of this level is that we're helping Sander Cohen build his quad tick, which you'll see what the quad tick is in a second. It's a creepy little art thing that he's building. Um, and, and the way that we're helping him build this is we are, um, we are going to kill some of his understudies, some of his apprentices, basically, and take pictures of their corpses. And then he puts those pictures into his quad tick. Super creepy. Never played Bioshock, but enjoying the run. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you're enjoying it. It's a very fun. It's like a fun game to play casually, but it's also a super fun game to, to speed run. There you go. There's I'm saying uh, there's, as oh. well. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I was saying as well. I like being able to see all the areas we normally skip entirely. <laughs> yep, and that was that was kind of the motivation behind making this uh, no major skips category. Was that like yeah, like it's cool that we can skip over entire levels, but like. It's also fun to play through them, you know, because this game does have some excellent level design. Um, so that was kind of the whole the whole purpose behind making the No Major Skips category. All right, so that's the quad tick that we're helping him build, and we'll put the first picture there. Boop, got it. Now we'll go get the rest of his three little apprentices. Oh, that was weird. We had some goofy uh, dialogue skipping going on. All right, we're going to get ready for another death warp coming up. I don't know. Reload, reload my aunt, uh, Eve there. This guy is gonna freeze us in place. This is this is apprentice number two. All right. So after he's done freezing us, we'll take care of him and take his picture. <laughs> he beat a MF with another MF. Yeah, I know. There's something satisfying about a. Uh, Yeeting your enemies at your enemies. All right, here we go. That guy in the, so there's a bunch of like frozen corpses, but it's this guy back here. He's, he's the real guy. All right, now I'm gonna get my grenade out. I'm gonna get my proximity grenades out and we're gonna place this so that we can instantly kill um, the next dude. And we're gonna get ready for a death warp up here too. Ooh, I almost fell off the edge, okay. 
So the next guy is going to spawn right there. We're going to do a little death warp. And uh, we're going to come back to this area. And you'll be able to hear an explosion when we, like, walk through that ice area again. And that'll be him just instantly dying. You should be able to hear it right about now. There it is. Angels. Boop. Hi, guy. There's body number two. Please don't get in my way, Splicer. Thank you. Hi, little sister. Please stay out of my way. Take care of that machine. Take care of that machine. We don't want them to deal too much damage. They can kind of mess, mess your run up if you take too much damage from those guys. Oops. We're going to trigger these cutscenes here. I'm going to trigger my invincibility frames. And we're also going to put a couple of grenades right there and right there. We're going to insta-kill the third, fourth, yes, fourth and final uh, um, apprentice uh, by just putting those grenades there. Boop. All right, trigger that. We'll go backwards. You can hear the explosion. That's the guy dying. Take our... Oh, there he is. Oh, am I out of ammo? <gasps> Lord have mercy. All right. We're good now. I've never ran out of ammo like that before. That was goofy. All right. Luckily, I can just buy it right there. I'm having a couple goofy never happen before things. You, thankfully, it's like really minor and doesn't matter, but still, silliness. We'll grab that. That's a good weapon to have. Picture one and two in there. We're going to skip past. Oh. As I said, we're going to skip past this dialogue. There we go. All right. Do a little dialogue manipulation and uh, cause this fight to, to start. Normally, you'd have to wait for a bunch of dialogue before this little fight here would start. Oh, there we go. So another another enemy of, or wave of enemies that we're going to fight, so a lot more yeeting. you to yeet to our heart's content. But we got to do it some, to some dope music here. I really think the music is actually like really fitting for this fight because you're kind of dancing around while it's happening. Sometimes if you throw a body just right, it'll bounce off two enemies and kill kill two enemies with one shot, but not usually. Uh, I can't see you through the smoke. Oh, hi, Jesus. All right, that was the wave of enemies. That seemed really fast, actually. There we go, there's Sander going, bye! There's kind of a cool thing in this game, like, if you're playing casually, um, you can either choose to kill him there, or you can let him live, and if you let him live, then later on in the game, you have access to a, a weapon upgrade that would normally be locked for you. But yeah, that's Fort Frolic, that's a level that we normally skip through, and I know I kind of zoomed through it still, but it's actually, it's like, a really excellent level. Um, so it is fun that we get to, uh, it's fun that we get to play through it. Here's Hephaestus. I think, I feel like Hephaestus is kind of accepted as maybe like the most annoying level. It's just kind of like we're running around in circles and there's like a lot of, there's a lot of objectives to complete. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of room for error if you, if you don't do things quite right. Um, but it's not, it's not so horrible. Actually, Welcome to Rapture is probably like the most technically annoying. Um, but I guess other than that, you know, with that with that weird little electrobolt jumping mechanic that we did earlier, but besides that, this is probably the least the least appreciated level, I guess. All right, let's see if we can hop over these rocks. We should be able to. It's not so hard, but if you don't hop right, then you'll just not make it over. All right, we're gonna switch to our grenades. We're gonna want those to fight the big daddies coming up. We are gonna grab a audio diary off her. We're gonna play it, and then we're gonna immediately play a different audio diary, and that's gonna cause. As soon as the audio diary that we just picked up finishes playing, this door starts opening. And by picking up that, or by playing the other audio diary right there, we're able to um, get to start playing immediately. Or to finish playing immediately, rather. Oh. All right, we're gonna get our grenade and shoot these guys so that they don't body block us. Bye. Hop through the water, it's moving faster if we do that. I like to put some fire on the ground so it Burns anybody that's trying to follow me. Get my telekinesis out, get our grenades out, and we are gonna fight some big daddies. 
But we gotta build a um, EMP bomb in this level, and we need to collect a handful of components. Um, and we need components. Oh, that was a really nice hop down there. Um, a nuanced movement thing, but that was really clean. Uh, so yes, we need um, components from these big daddies in order to build. Oh, he's over here. That's actually kind of nice. Okay. Come on. Pew. All right. Um, anyways, yeah, normally the big daddy's not there. Usually he's located in a different area in this part of the level. Um, but yeah, so we need components from the big daddies, we need components from, um, the ionic gel containers, and we need, like, one little nitroglycerin thing. We collect all those components, we're able to build this comically large bomb that apparently we just pocket. Um, alright, we're gonna hack, hack this. Um, yeah, and then we, we, uh, blow this place up, basically. So we trigger our invincibility frames, hit that swooch, get this thing, and we're gonna die in the corner here, and, uh, start going around and collecting all our components. Oh, out of my way, little sister. Oh, she's body blocking me. Here, I'm gonna put this here so she uh, walks away from the entrance of that, because we're gonna go through that thing again in the future. Give me first aid, kids. All right, we're gonna get ready for a death warp coming up here. Beep. We gotta be careful with this one. We can't do it too early, otherwise this guy in here will absolutely uh, kill us earlier than we want to be killed. We got it, that was nice and smooth. Hopefully this little sister has moved and is no longer body blocking us. All right, that's good. Thanks, little sister, for getting out of the way. Um, so here's why I'm kind of happy that this big daddy was was over here. Um, if he's in a different section of level, then we got to do a little extra moving around. But we have to come down here to collect this ionic gel container. So it's kind of nice that he's just en route. Well, that was a nice movement down that area, too. All right, we got all our components now. We are ready to build our bomb. And like I say, it's a comically large bomb that, like I say, apparently we just stick this thing in our pockets. Got it. We'll just pocket that bad boy and, and move on. Does it look like it's a real bomb? It does look like a real bomb. All right, now we are gonna do a little fling and we're just gonna hop right through the center of this level. Yeehaw! There we go, we placed the bomb. Oops. Oh, there we go. I thought I was gonna have to... I didn't think I was gonna die right away. I thought I was gonna have to skip a few seconds waiting through invincibility frames. We are good. All right, and we're basically done with this level. We just gotta get out of here. I'm gonna reload my um, grenades. Ooh, hi, person. There's gonna be an enemy coming up that's gonna wanna try to body block us, so... Good to have your grenade launcher out here for that. Not you, but you right here. Eat him. Get out of here. In my intellect. We had to do some really cool trickery in this next level. This next level is very much like a story, a story level where it's just, a, you know, a big cutscene level, but we skip pretty much past all of it by doing some really weird tricks here. We're gonna do a warping trip where we're gonna um, play a radio message and then we're gonna actually exit out to the level that we were just playing through. Um, but it won't exit... Oh, there we go. Move through that a little too fast. It won't actually exit out to the to the previous level until a, a bunch of dialogue is played. And we can trigger the cutscene for this level and then get warped out. And it just is a way that we can skip through um, all the, the cutscenes. There's an invisible wall that I just hopped over by jumping on top of that vending machine. Um, it, be, it can be kind of annoying if you're not super familiar with the hitbox of it, but I made it look easy. All right, do some dialogue manipulation, play some messages in the right order that allows this door to open. And as soon as we, I'm gonna play a radio message or a dialogue message right there. And we're gonna, oh, oh it, didn't, it didn't play. Apparently I pressed one too few buttons. You can trigger this this level warp a little earlier if you play a uh, audio diary before you hit that section. But anyways, we did the thing. We triggered the uh, cutscene. We exited back to the previous level, and now we're gonna re-enter the level that we were just at. And so the cutscene is is like playing, but we don't have to wait for it. We're gonna be able to move right past it. It's like a really really weird, neat little little trick. How's my health looking? My health's looking just fine. All right. So, 
a weird part about this is as the cutscene gets triggered, the door to this next area is locked, but we can hop over the door by doing a fling, and that's what I'm grabbing this napalm for. I like to I like to heal up. Sometimes if you do flings and drop from high enough, it can kill you. If you have like too low of health. Oh, I wish this thing wouldn't have rotated. So you want this thing to kind of be straight on. It helps with um, how your flings go. That's really good position. Make it quick save because this is kind of a tricky jump. Sometimes it takes a few tries. Boom, first try, not bad. All right, we're gonna enter into this door. Another weird little save load thing. We can make hard save and then load that save and it allows us to skip past a cutscene. So this is kind of like, I, I call it the M. Night Shyamalan twist part of the game. And it is a really, really good twist if uh, if you're playing casually. This this really is a cool part. This is the part of the game where I thought, during the first time I played through this, I thought this was the end of the game. And then everything changes and it's like, oh, nope. We're only probably about halfway to two thirds of the way through the game. And now there's like a whole lot of dialogue that we gotta wait through, but we can skip through it. I gotta say. There we go. And we can just move. We can just move on through. Hi, Andrew Ryan. Oh, hi, little sister. Or I'll follow you. Oh, it's a trick. It's a trap. There we go. There we go. All right. Now we get to hang out with Tenenbaum and the little sisters. This is kind of like their safe haven in Rapture. Tenenbaum is, is uh, the lady who basically created the Little Sisters, and at some point in her career, she kind of gets this guilt and decides that she needs to, like, save them. She needs to save, save the Little Sisters, and she helped create them. She feels bad for what she's done. It's pretty brutal. It's pretty messed up if you know, like, the lore of this game. What, what she's done to these poor girls is, yeah, it's pretty tragic. We can do a little bit of dialogue manipulation here. There we go. And I like to play a little game while I'm waiting for, we gotta just wait for some dialogue. And I like to see how many times we can bounce off the top of her head. It tries to bounce you off, so that's what I do to to, to waste time here. I think my my record is nine. I'm not sure what the, the highest record is, but I feel like maybe it might be, might be mine. Nine is a lot of bounces. Usually I only get two or three. So I was, I was pretty stoked when I got that. I should have I should have saved it and put it on YouTube's. World record sister. Bouncing? I don't know, that sounds weird. A little bit. another... Yeah, it sounds, sounds a little awkward. Although, a huge part of this game, like, if you're playing casually, you get health bonuses by taking pictures of these little sisters. But I feel like that's also, like, kind of a creepy element of the game. Oh, I missed it. If you jump just right off the top of that railing, you can land on her head, too. Another, another little swag thing. It doesn't do anything for the run. It's just all for swag, I guess. Boop. Grab that thing. We're gonna come over here and start turning this. Wait to rotate that thing till just about so, and we can crawl under that door. Okay, so we're gonna do another like, I think this is a really cool trick. Um, it's another one of those warping tricks like we did in RCC. So I'm gonna go to this door to the next level, and I'm gonna play a radio message, and and hit this door. Make sure I don't mess it up. There we go. Um, and as soon as enough dialogue is played, it'll warp us out of this level. And I, I'm gonna have to pay attention here because I gotta listen to dialogue. So when he says code yellow, when that dialogue finishes, it'll warp you out of the level. But if you do a quick save and a quick load, it'll uh, reset that dialogue. We do that once or twice just to extend the the radio message so we don't get warped out early. All right, and there's the, the second and last time that I'll have to reset that dialogue. Boink. Ah. We get this audio diary right here and we're gonna play that audio diary. And then we're gonna play another radio message. And we are good to go. Now we don't have to do any more quick save and quick load and worrying about dialogue. We're, we'll be good until we get to the end of the level. All right, 57. 44. There we go. 
All right. So the whole point of this level and the next level is that Fontaine's got like this this mind control on us, and we're gonna break that mind control by getting these lot 192 like antidote formula things. Um, and that yeah, that's that's what we're doing in this this level and the next one. Oh, it's a stubborn muscle. Point point. Hi, hi bear. Hi bear boy. To save the world entire. I need a place oh. for Walking into walls. Walking into walls. Alright. There's lot 192 one. Click that and play an audio diary. And now it's gonna warp us out of this level. Boop. There we go. Oh, and our health is looking perfect. Hood yellow is good Mountain Dew flavor. <laughs> yeah, it is. Wait. <laughs> That'd be great if they made a code yellow. Alright, so we want our health to be low, because we're gonna do a, a death warp at the end of this level and and you can basically get to that point without taking any damage. Um, if our health, if we had a lot more health, we'd have to just reduce it by, you know, pissing off certain enemies or whatever. Um, but we're exactly where we want to be. So this, after we collect that lo that first lot 192 that we just picked up, all of a sudden our plasmids start going haywire and it gets randomized, randomized because it's it's always the same. Um, but like. You know, if you're if you're not familiar with it, it would seem randomized. But yeah, we'll have this ice for a little while, then they'll switch up to decoy, and then after that, I'm sure it would switch to something else. But we don't ever really get to that point. All right, let's do a corner hop. Hope we don't fail on it. Yeah, we got it. Oh my God, would you please get out of my way, guy? That was that was rude. All right, please don't kill me with a grenade. All right. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I've never had a guy like run into this area before like that. That was goofy. All right, we got it. We got it. That guy scared me for a second. I thought he was gonna kill us with one of his grenades, but, but we good. We good. Mountain Dew Winter Blast. Yeah, Code Yellow Mountain Dew Winter Blast. We got all sorts of uh. Yeah, that's what you turn Code Red into. Yeah, basically, right? We got all sorts of potential Mountain Dew flavors. Bioshock themed to Mountain Dew flavors. Yo, Busto. I like to kill them. You don't have to, but I like to. It's the principle of it. Okay. So we're about to do the elevator hop. So there's an elevator that you can ride down, but obviously it's much faster to, to fall down an elevator than it is to ride down one, naturally. I like to make a quick save here because if you do it wrong, you can soft lock. It's not too terribly hard, but if you do mess it up, then it's a whole thing. There we go. Boink. Well, that was nice and fast. That was good. All right. Got it. Out of my way, please, guy. All right. Now on to Point Prometheus. This is where our third and and final um, major skip would be. So there's a point. It's called this last chance kid skip. It's a, a little. Um, trigger that that you can hop over normally it would lock you in place but if you hop over it just right you can move past it and you can exit out of the door before Fontaine here closes it on you I got all the Adam in the city pal thanks guy what is this you wait for go and get this idiot try not to let this light on fire I like to use this to kill these bots here all right, we're good. It's not flaming. It's not the end of the world if they don't blow up. It's just nice so they don't follow you and annoy you. Oh, they like explode my barrel before I had a chance. So this is the skip that locks you in place. We don't really have to worry about it because we're not trying to crawl through that door. But if you're if you hop over it and you're fast enough, you can move through that door before it closes on you. Um, so we are gonna turn ourselves oops we're gonna turn ourselves into a big daddy that's that's like the whole thing with this level um, so we're collecting big daddy suit parts and that's that's basically what is going on here oh hi guys you guys didn't get exploded earlier that's too bad oh it, it got blown up that was nice all right and after we turn ourselves into a big daddy, then we can basically lead the little sisters around. And that's that's kind of what, what is happening in this level. We need to get 
to the through the door that exits out of this level, and the only people that can open it up is the little sister. So we need to turn ourselves into a big daddy so that we can kind of convince the little sister to open the exit for us. That's what we're doing. Oh, hi, guy. Please leave me alone. Thanks. All right. We got a few body bodysuit parts. Now we're going to go get some pheromones so that we smell like the stinky big daddies. Pheromone number one. Oh, hi, person. Pheromones number two and pheromones number three. Now we can get out of this little part of the level. We got all the stinky pheromones. We're super stinky. Like, like we should be. This Houdini Splicer keeps wanting to, like, spawn right in front of us. Very rude. Alright, we're gonna get ready for a death warp coming up here. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Thanks for not sending the bots after me. I appreciate that game. I wish I was a little lower on health. Oh well. So there's the last little big daddy thing we need. The voice modulator. It's a harmless procedure. All right. There we go. Now we are fully big daddied. We can hit this and summon a little sister. Let's get some uh, proximity grenades. Excellent. Oh, oh, that one fell into the nether. All right, that's fine. We don't, we don't need it. So there we go. She'll open the door for us, and we can move on to the next level. So, little sisters in this game for speedrunners are kind of like notorious for being kind of hated, um, and and you might see why. Uh, there's a section up here where we can either get these little sisters to start walking or to start running, just depending on on how our movement is. Um, it seems like RNG, but it's not. But it seems like it is, but it's not. <laughs> but let's let's see how we do. We're gonna want to get in position right here. I think we're good. Oh, I might have moved too early. We'll see. We'll see. Where is she at? We'll see when she gets through this door. I feel like I messed it up, but we're, we're gonna see. Once she gets through this door, if she starts running, um, we're fine. If she starts walking, then she'll just be a slow folk, and that'll just be the way it is. It's a harmless procedure, yeah. Oh, she's walking. What a terrible human being. All right. So this is why we are not a fan. Like, if this if this was a run that I was like, if I was on pace, um, this would be a run killer right here. Um, and, and not only that, not only is it annoying because it's it's a potential run killer, but like while she's walking all slow, she will talk the illest smack at you. Be like, we don't wait for for big daddies. <laughs> It's, I think she like says uh, slow poke specifically. Yeah, yeah, slow pokes, yeah. And it's like oh. you just want to reach through the screen and slap them. One of the nice things, though, um, although it's a bit tricky to manage, right? If you like mess it up at all, it can it leads to this. But I know you can do a slight manipulation to get them to start running, and then depending on how you do with all the splicers, they may continue. Yep, which is what I'm hoping happens. I killed all the splicers. Oh, I think she's still going slow. What are you doing, little sister? Oh my goodness. See, don't be a slowpoke, Mr. B. Little sister, I swear, swear to all that is good and holy. Uh, if we kill this machine and this other machine up here, then she might also start running again. But yeah, she'll sit there and be like, we don't wait for slowpokes. I jerk. All right. Hurry, I think she's running now. I think she's running. Are you going, little sister? Where are you at? Are you just casually strolling down the hall? Nope, just casually strolling. Hurry, Mr. B. How about you hurry, little sister? It's actually kind of fun that I get to show off. <laughs> show off how she talks smack at you. No time to wait. All right, all right. And after this gathering sequence, she should be back to normal. Ready to run, I hope. All right, so this whole level is just us basically protecting her while she gathers Adam from these bodies. And while she's gathering Adam, um, we just have to fight waves of, of six enemies. 
And so we do more yeeting. More yeets. Yeets by Dre. <laughs> I've never said that before. I like that. Oh. Oh, I just like almost... It looked like I zoomed through the wall or something there. I must have accidentally like boosted off an item on the ground. There we go. All the enemies there. Okay. So there is a reason that I'm standing in that fire. We can get the little sister to warp if we do things just right. There we go. So we didn't have to wait for her to walk towards us. We just did some, um, oh, are you alive still? We did little sister warping, which, oh, what you doing? Oh, you're walking again. That's neat. That's fun. I'm glad you're doing that. Hurry, Mr. Bubbles. I will, little sister. I'll hurry. All right, I'm gonna make a quick save here, just in case. Every once in a while, um, the little sister can soft lock here. Um, so I'm gonna make it a quick save there just to be safe. Like after you're done gathering, sometimes she will be soft locked there and, uh, oh, and she just won't stand up. She'll just stay at the body forever. And you'll just be wondering like, hey, what's going on? Oh, they're coming fast. They coming fast. Hi, friend. Oh. There we go. Stand the fire, like I say, we're setting up our little sister warp, so that's why I'm lighting fire and standing in it. Oh, I didn't do it right that time, apparently. We gotta wait for her to finish running. If I did it right, she would have just, like, been right there when I turned around. Can't win them all. Get our uh, steel bolts out. We're gonna use these to shoot a few of splicers that are hiding in a puddle. There we go, running nice and fast. Let's go, kiddo. Let's go, kiddo. Hurry, Mr. Bubbles. Let's get it. If this were any percent, she would have ran. It actually is easier to set up on any percent because you don't, it's just, it's a different setup just because of certain things. Um, but you never know. All right. We're gonna set up for our next sister warp. We're gonna just hang right here. Light some fire, walk through the fire, stop moving for just a second. She should be pop right there, nice. Got it. Angels don't wait for slow folks. All right, last wave of enemies to fight and then we'll be moving on to the next level soon after that. Oh, okay, apparently, uh, apparently I'm having trouble shooting these guys. So like, if there's like part of that railing there, like normally yeeting enemies at enemies one shots them, but like if, if your uh, bodies collide with any sort of object before it hits the enemies, it like slows it down and doesn't deal full damage, so. Oh, like there. I probably hit the little sister. Wow, having a lot of trouble with this one. But yeah, if your uh, telekinesis shots aren't like straight on, it can not deal full damage. Are we done? Was that my last one? I think so. Yeah, all right. All right, now we're heading on to the end of this level. Oh, thought I missed you. Ah, it's all right. We don't need her. Okay. We got all the proximity grenades we want. Fantastic. So we like to pause here and let this little sister move on forward. She's gonna go unlock the door and we like to let her unlock the door. Otherwise she gets scared when we do this next fight coming up right now. Are you unlocking the door? You are, how wonderful. Nailed it. Beautiful. You don't really need to fight that big daddy but he just kind of gets in the way and max you around while you're waiting for the bubble to finish so it's convenient to get rid of them all right so we want six proximity grenades that's the max amount of proximity grenades you can get we want that for the boss and we want to grab a bunch of extra grenades and we can basically the boss fight is a three phase fight and you can insta kill his first two phases with proximity grenades then you can finish off his third phase just by firing a bunch of regular grenades at him you are reaching close now 
that a first aid kit? I will get that. I'm pretty, pretty low. I should be fine, but you get the first aid kit just to be safe. All right. And I'm sure you are aware, but uh, the end of the game is coming up in about a minute and a half or so. I'll give you a countdown when we're getting real, real close, but get those, get those stop timer fingers ready. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> But it's yeah, been a really so, good run so far. Yeah, is that pretty satisfied with it. Nothing's gone horribly, horribly wrong. It's, a, it's pretty decent. I don't think we're anywhere near PB time. No, we're not. But still, all in all, it's not been not been a horrible run. Yeah, right now. But yeah, like about, I say, uh, 106 RTA. Perfect. That's that's right where we want to be. Um, so we're gonna fire three grenades down, and that'll kill his first phase. And then after that, we'll fire three more grenades down, and that'll kill his second phase. Um, and that's that's just how that goes. And you want to place them slightly apart from each other. If they're like stacked directly on top of each other, you won't die. And then we want to reload our next set of grenades while we're running up to his body, and that'll cause we'll just have time to fully reload our grenades. Um, by the time we're ready for his next phase. Here we go. All right, so the next time I stab his body like this, it'll be the end of the run. I'll give you a little countdown, like I say. Oh, come on now. There we go. So probably about five, four, three, two, one. End of the run. Yay! All right. Not bad. And you guys get to meet my little my little Chihuahua. Um, he's gonna pop out of my neck hole in a second, I'm sure. But yeah, <laughs> that's Bioshock. Thanks for watching, guys. Or are you being a sleepy boy? Are you not gonna come say hi? I see him. I see him. Oh, no, now there he is. He heard it. He, he knows when I'm done with my runs and he always likes to pop out and say <laughs> hi. Hi, buds. It's like buds. the alien run, it's the chest burster. I, yeah, basically, he's like, he's like an alien popping out of my chest. He's actually known as the terror on my stream because if, if the roommates are making too much noise downstairs, he'll uh, start growling and barking and, and letting everybody know. But yeah, this is Bentley. You can say hi to Bentley. He's been hanging out inside my shirt this whole run. That's just what he likes to do while I stream. Sneaky. But yeah, anyways, that's it for me. I'll, I'll just give a, a quick shout out to the whole Bioshock community. A bunch of great folks there. If you guys uh, ever want to learn some, some good, fun, fairly, you know, speed runs with a friendly learning curve, Bioshock is the game to check out um and if you want to see more stuff from me you can always check me out on twitch.tv slash benedictator spelled just like it is on the screen there um and otherwise in chat. you can yeah and in chat yep otherwise uh i, I post all my pbs and stuff on the youtubes and and my youtube channel is the same as my twitch name so yeah otherwise that's it for me thanks for having me guys it was fun i hope you enjoyed and uh i'll let you transition on over to the next runner all right, you pretty much baby and all the stuff I was gonna say. I was gonna say, shy yourself out. Let us know where you find you on Twitch. I, well, we have I'm the link to chat. It. <laughs> yeah, it's I good. Yeah. Runners, I said, I'll, I'll be ready for it. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> all right. Uh, as well, if you, uh, if anyone did miss it, it is Benedictator. I posted the link in Twitch chat, and you can uh, find the runner there. Uh, it was always a great run seeing Bioshock. Thank you again for doing the run. I love this category. I like being able to see a lot of the game that you don't get to see. As well, while we're doing the ending, I may as well say that we're going to be uh, setting up for the next game momentarily. Before we do that, though, we're going to be going over to a quick wellness break. This is the time to stand up, stretch, touch your toes, grab water, do what you need to stay healthy. Uh, before we do that, though, I do just want to say that uh, Frame Fatales has been selected as a finalist for the Game Her Awards. Uh, learn more with exclamation mark vote and go vote for Frame Fatales if you'd like to support that. All right. Anyway, that being said, thank you again, Benedictator, and we will be right yeah. back. All right, we are back from the break. I always love watching Bioshock. It's one of my favorite games and my favorite speed games. And it was nice to take quite a deep dive into the world of speedrunning in that, especially since we don't get to see a lot of those levels normally. Anyway, now that we've seen the depths of outer space and the depths of the ocean, oh, now we're going to be taking a bit more control of the situation at hand, and we're going to be going oh, to God, a different area of sci-fi. Uh, that being said, uh, I guess that kind of gives away what our last game of the night is, but we're going to be looking at Control All Bosses by Demonic Robots. Take it away. 
All right. Hey there, everyone. My name is Demonic Robots, and welcome to Control. This is a Remedy Games game where basically it's SCP the game. Um, essentially, this game is about a building that is bigger on the inside than it is the outside, and it has some very spooky stuff going on regarding not only uh, people, but objects of power as well. So if you're a fan of the SCP universe, which I'm assuming a lot of you are, um, you're going to enjoy this game. Um, this is going to be the all bosses category. So normally for the speed run in any percent, we only do one boss and that one boss that we do is basically just paralyzed with fear when we're fighting him so he doesn't even move um, so it's basically zero but here we're going to be doing every single boss that is in the original game so we're not going to be doing the DLC bosses we're doing the ones that were on release date um, I'm joined by a couple of commentators here uh, I'm joined by Bucky who is another runner and the current any percent world record holder if he wants to say hi hello and then we also got Cosmic, who isn't a runner, but he's watched a lot of the stuff and he's a, a good guy, so we're gonna have him on here as well. Hey, I'm DE Cosmic. All right, we are gonna be starting here. Time is gonna start when we skip this very first cutscene and we're gonna jump right into it. This game has a lot of tank and a lot of different movements. It's very glitchy and there are gonna be some times where there might be some stuff going wrong, but um, if it does, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out uh, when we get there. But um, I'm gonna have Bunky explain a lot of the tank and I'll try and go over the story as best this as I can, but it's gonna be a little bit difficult. Unusual. All right, time is gonna start in three, two, one. Hello? So welcome to Control. This is a 2019 Remedy game made by the people who did Alan Wake. So if you have seen Alan Wake, or more like Alan Sleep, am I right? Uh, then this is going to be a very familiar kind of style of game for you guys. I've done enough night You always forget Quantum Break and it just upsets me every time. Well, well, this game is connected to Alan Wake, to be fair. Whereas, you know, Quantum Break and, and Max Payne are not, but oh, I see what you mean. But yes, this is also made by the people who did Quantum Break. Um, also, the people who did Max Payne, too, so. And um, if you're a Remedy fan, you'll actually will like this game a lot because pretty much all of the major characters are characters who were major characters in their previous games. Um, I believe that the director basically said that like he wanted an all-star cast with this game. So because of that, um, basically he has like all the major voice actors like jesse's voice actor is originally from quantum break um director trench right here is from max Payne, and then one of the characters dr darling is from alan wake but here we go it's the classic boomer tale of working her way up so jesse started out as the janitor's assistant and now she is the ceo of the fbc basically um so you're probably wondering what happened we basically uh touched a gun and now we teleported here um, that's gonna be a very common theme with this game, but um, essentially this is an object of power in OOP and oops And what that means is that it has very anomalous properties to it that make it very unique So the first thing about it is that it never runs out of ammo But it's also gonna be our only weapon throughout the game despite us using different guns Because essentially it starts out as a pistol But we can turn it into other things later on like a shotgun or hopefully we'll be able to turn it into a sniper rifle later yeah, and you also see Demonic, you only have like a couple like really big uh, combat options in this game. So you see him using that melee there, and that's just sort of to, um, you know, so he doesn't unload his gun entirely, and he can he's able to let it reload, like, because it regenerates ammo, uh, that one clip that you have. So you can use the melee when you're, especially when you're close to enemies, uh, to make sure that you can fill up the gun's ammo a little bit more so you can just lay down some damage afterwards as well, keep the, the flow going, so to speak, stay in control. Yeah, oh, unfortunately, yeah. the melee isn't very useful later, but coming up in the first intro section is something we call spawn minutes, and that comes down to uh, the enemies spawning wherever you're looking, pretty much. So as you saw there, he ran into the room looking backwards, and that made them spawn over into the corner. He then killed all three and then tried to look to the left, so they would spawn by the door, but it's fine. The, they spawned across the hall, and those last two always spawned by the, by the door there. But you're going to be seeing that uh, throughout most of the combat sections, there's pretty much a spawn minute for almost every fight. Yeah. And uh, this like red air aura right here, we learned that the uh, Federal Bureau of Control has been taken over by, I don't know if you would call it an entity, an organism called the Hiss. Uh, and they've infe infected pretty much everybody there, which is why these control points here that Demonic is about to activate, they serve as the game's checkpoints and uh, you're essentially cleansing the hiss from a, a given area. So I don't remember, this is yeah, the central executive wing. I had to like look up there in left hand corner. That would be nice if I could yep. see. Um, <laughs> and 
this you'll see like the, all the red haze sort of go away and this just lets you know that the hiss no longer has like you know control of that's not even an intended but they no longer have control of uh, that surrounding <laughs> area yeah I'm going through and cleansing each point um, the control points are also really good because they're also um, very similar to bonfires in Dark Souls, so they also heal you up, and that's where you activate your abilities and all that jazz. Um, one of the other good things about them is that whenever you quit to menu, you will teleport back to the most recent control point that you touched, so that saves a lot of time walking back to some areas that we need to, like this right now, for example. This is going to be the first quit out out of many. Um, most of the time, these are not IGT abuse. They're actually actually saving time RTA as well, but there are a few like this one where um, it really just saves time in-game time versus out of the game. But um, yeah, right now, Jesse like, doesn't right. have any of her main powers, so because of that, a lot of his combat is very optimized and, you know, very specific to what we do and where we're looking and all that stuff. Like right here, we want to look all the way over here. That's going to spawn. Oh, we got some weird spawns. Normally, there's a guy that spawns right He's there, the but corner. that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. We can work with that. And then, let's see, they should spawn right here. Yep. A little bit weird, but this cafeteria area is very weird uh, when it comes to the it's spawns, very, but... Yeah, it's very peculiar. Um, Thankfully, these guys with... always spawn the same spot. Yeah, another thing with uh, the melee is that it's actually very strong on shield enemies. Like that guy, I'll just tap the shield right away. Uh, you can also line uh, multiple enemies up like you did there. And then up has just got two more left before we can cleanse the seep. And then coming up is probably our bread and butter for combat, and that's uh, it's the launch ability, right? Yeah. So um, basically, in this game, there are SCP-like objects, um, and this one has a... Uh, it's basically a floppy disk and it holds Soviet nuclear launch codes. So because it has launch codes on it, uh, it lets us launch things. Like that. That dude just got the job. <laughs> yeah. They, he didn't have a very good time at it. Um, so right have... here is a semi-developer intended skip uh, ladder jump. Um, oh, let's try that one more time. Oh. Yeah, it's very particular, the angle, because you have to mantle up at the highest point. But there you there go. There we go. Not too difficult. And now we have launch. We touch the floppy disk and can throw things with our mind. Um, you're gonna notice every time we're in the astral plane here, this is kind of a tutorial type area. So, uh, basically it just tells you, or teaches you how to use each ability. But this is going to be, like I said, our bread and butter with combat. Uh, it does the most damage throughout the entire run. Uh, even, even without upgrades, I think it's pretty strong. Yeah, but yeah even if it is, doesn't yeah. kill them, it can, um, at, at not, the like, very one least. Shot. Yeah, at the very least knock them down so they're not shooting at you. But um, you're going to notice something. Uh, we have something called pull-throughs. Um, basically, when you launch an object, it locks onto an enemy, usually. But that doesn't mean that it's only going to hit that enemy. Um, half the time, you can actually hit other enemies with one object. And that's like the best way to optimize combat, is hitting multiple enemies with one object. We're getting two hits in one. But anyway, here's our first uh, physics flip out. It's called Nomasi. But since this is all bosses, we can't actually use it to skip Nomasi. We're just using it to skip running all the way around. But uh, essentially, oh. you. Uh oh. Oh, oh. no. That's fine. That happens sometimes with that enemy. Um, that's going to be another thing you're going to notice a lot with uh, the combat in this game is that sometimes the common enemies, even if they're like, to like totally normal, sometimes they just put shots downrange on you and can hit you super easily. Um, so that's this one of the examples actually, right there. This game's actually pretty tough. You die very fast in there. Yeah, there is no difficulty slider, and this game was, wasn't was really designed to be like Dark Souls difficult, but it's definitely designed to be like a hard game. Um, and along with that, uh, originally there were no accessibility options, so uh, we don't use those in the run at all. But anyway, with this uh, clip out, he's just trying to get the prop over his head and so he can clip up through the prop and then it pushes him up into the ceiling. And okay. there he goes, just like that. Now he just drops down and starts our first boss, Tomas. Yeah. He's actually like a common enemy that we fight later on. So you're going to notice with this uh, enemy, there's some similar variants to what he is later on. Um, basically, uh, when it comes to those flying enemies, they will always dodge, or they won't always, but they'll 90% of the time dodge out of the way to not get hit by your uh, teleportation like ability. Um, sometimes they'll get hit, sometimes they won't. 
but they like always try and dodge out of it the first time. So later on, you'll see me actually trying to bait these out. But uh, there we go. That was the first boss fight. Isn't too bad. And now we hold W for the next 30 seconds, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep, that uh, that is the first boss in the game. However, um, you saw how I did that clip. Now, with any percent, we actually just skip the boss. He only activates if you drop down onto that floor below. Um, so that saves like probably about 30 to 45 seconds in any percent. Whereas in comparison to uh, all bosses, the clip out saves like 10 seconds. So it's still Something worth like doing, that. but no. yeah. I don't think you can get it first try, which you did, you know, if that enemy didn't kill you. But anyway, yeah. this is the Ocean View Motel, which in the lore is described as like a sort of security measure, like kind of like a lock, um, where only agents with the right clearance can actually traverse it and get through. But uh, they have this to protect the hotline, which is going to be our sort of communication with the, the board. And doesn't the tutorial say extra dimensional entities? Yes. So um, the board, if you don't know, there's uh, a, this black pyramid is actually a thing. Um, if you ever hear like jumbled up talking uh, during the cutscenes, that's the board. Um, basically, the hotline lets us communicate directly with it because we are the uh, director of the Federal Bureau of Control. It also lets us uh, communicate with ghosts. So for example, we can communicate with Trench via the bullet that is still in his brain from the service gun that we picked up. Um, we should also mention that Jesse is the only person who can use this gun. Um, if somebody else who picks it up is not the director, then uh, they just die from it. So she doesn't really like sharing her toys. But um, <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of like the setting that this is in is she's kind of the very much the chosen one. Um, she also has a voice in her head named Polaris, so it's another reason as to why she's not being infected by the hiss, because otherwise she would have been taken over pretty much the moment that she stepped into the uh, into the oldest house, which is the building we're in. Did you get the hotline? I mean, how is yeah, it? She's it's also here to like find her brother, which I guess was I guess he was taken by the Federal Bureau of Control, like very like young. I for I forget the hit details exactly. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jesse and her brother were in an altered world event when they were children, and the That's bureau right. took, yeah. yeah, the bureau took her brother and not her. She got away. So she's here to find him. Um, but anyway, coming up is definitely the most tech-heavy level in the run. Uh, right off the bat, he does fade out skip, which is opening the menu again after, you know, selecting the floor, and that lets you skip about a five-second fade out sequence. Uh, you know, not not a huge time save, but it's nice to have. Um, and mm -hmm. then, sector is the janitor domain. If I can find you know, right more, here. Yeah, more can stuff going on. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe no, maybe we're not doing slidey. Um, you guys okay. don't know, slidey is basically a glitch where Jesse turns into a gun. Um, it really isn't that much faster. It's much harder to do, and it can uh, soft lock your game. So I don't really do it too much. It's also very marathon shy, so. Yeah. yeah, that's true. I think um, it's been done anyway, in like one one marathon. marathon. I think it was yes. you too. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think he's the only one that's gotten it. Yeah, so at least in for this whatever part reason, where it was relevant. If for whatever reason that CP back there doesn't work if you run to it from the start of the level, so we just clip out of bounds to get past it. Otherwise, you know, it sits there and wastes like forty-five seconds before we can actually interact with it and progress. Uh, and then here we are uh, in another fight, and fights are slow, so we're just gonna you know, get out, get past. And we're actually not gonna go where we need to go. We're gonna go to the left here and, go, and do the only side mission in the run. And this is gonna give us a primary movement ability. Well, if this was uh, any percent, this would be the only side mission. Oh, that's true. That's true. My bad. Place makes me nauseous. But th this is still like you know the most important Object movement power. ability in the game. And if you didn't get this casually, I just have to ask how. <laughs> yep. Two percent. Two percent of people didn't get probably the most important ability in the entire yeah. game. More important than launch itself. That's, that's uh, what the stats say. Which, oh man, that, that hurts. I feel bad for those people. That must not have been a good time. Yeah, that's like um, going through Dark Souls throughout the world, dude. Yeah, but then here we have uh, another trick jump which helps us skip part of the tutorial and what he's basically doing here is jumping out to the sides of these oh. walls because the collision on them kind of extends 
He's trying to avoid touching them because that's going to teleport him right back. But he, he did it, no problem. And he just dashed straight to the end. And hopefully these enemies don't, don't hurt you too much. Nah, we're fine. Nah, we're fine. We're good. Yeah. I've had those guys just like we meet a 1 HP before, so. All right, so I did want to ask, I did see you do some ability upgrades, and I believe that's all based on, like, the materials that you get, right? Is that something? Uh, it's mission no. completion. Mission yeah. completion? Mission so, is complete or whatever? whenever we either complete a mission or we find certain hidden locations, which we don't really use in the run, um, we get points to upgrade our abilities. Um, we upgrade a few things. Uh, right now, we focused on getting energy and health, or I'm sorry, launch and health. We want to get launch damage up as fast as we can, and that's probably the most important ability because there is actually level stuff in this game, and um, we actually end up at, near the end of the game pretty out leveled because even though we're doing a lot of side quests, we don't get any better modifications. We don't get really any better guns. We don't get any better mods for those guns. So because of that, we're like, you know, small fish in a big pond. And, yeah, the uh, game yeah. was uh, the game was definitely designed for you to explore the world and find better upgrades like throughout the hero. Yeah, yeah and because we're dirty like... speedrunners who skip everything like this. <laughs> uh, yeah, we we're at the mercy of, of we're at the mercy of whatever the enemies we kill draw. But here he's yes. doing a, another clip out with something called the fridge, and this works a bit differently because it's pushing him up there because uh, you pick up the smaller side. But you got up no problem. And that, that gets around to the door so we can get into here. So after you kill these guys... Oh. There we go. Yeah, you can cleanse it and now we can lift the override. All of the setup before that put out was, was so we can we can press this button here. And it's kind of good we didn't get that control point that we pointed out earlier. Um, if we did, we would have teleported back to it and it would have been a slower run back over. Yeah, exactly. And now we teleport back to uh, go talk to uh, Emily. Yeah, so back to the story, what we just did was lift a lockdown, which was keeping us out of every other sector in the oldest house. Uh, so now that we've lifted it, Jesse, we're going back to report to Emily, and you Emily's now going to direct us to research. Uh, we're I, going I, to be finding Marshall, I, who's the head of, I don't remember. Uh, security. Security? No, not security. Oh, okay. um, she's like... Um, She's a former CIA agent who basically does, like, not security in terms of defense, security in terms of, like, offense is kind of what her role is. Yeah, I don't remember what it's called. I know Salvador's security, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so this is definitely the most combat-heavy level, but we do have some out-of-bounds stuff coming up. Uh, it's going to be two skips back-to-back, -back, actually, so hopefully I'll do my best to explain. Yeah, this is where things are going to get weirder than usual. <laughs> it's definite. <laughs> but yeah, this is actually my so, favorite area of the game because this looks really nice in comparison to everything yeah. else. Awesome. Yeah, I agree. Um, so, coming up here, uh, there would normally be a fight, but we just, you know, don't go anywhere near it. We're just not interested. That That's what... Uh, instead, we just take this fridge thing, whatever it's called, and position it over here so we can flip out of bounds and just uh, oh no it it off, right? got kind of curved Unfortunate. try that one more time there we go there you go yeah and we're dashing across to uh, on, on top of the hallway then we yeah, uh, on top of, we on drop... top of a hallway and then we're going to be going over a room where a second fight would be taking place and that is called two fight skip but we're not done because we go right into the next skip, which is called Squeamy Skip. And that's going to start out with them dropping down here and touching a very precise trigger in this corner here. Yep, that looks good. And he's going to be dashing around the next two rooms. And this is going to skip the uh, puzzle with the, uh, what do we call them? The, the Screamy Screamy. Boys? The, yeah, Screamy Boys, where you throw the power cubes in and uh, we were back into the garage. We're just skipping that because it's slow. And hopefully if everything went properly then we'll shoot marshall in the intercom and we're good and we're good and now it's probably the coolest looking fight in the game um you're gonna see those uh red orbs a lot and he's gonna try and take them out for first because as long as those are alive they'll fuel every other enemy in the area oh hello there you are 
Um, this is also the only area where I'm going to be specifically looking for items and kind of going slower in order to attempt to collect things because we because will we'll need some certain stuff in this area that we can only get in the research sector and we don't really show up here later on. And there was a dude down there. Did you drop anything good? No, you didn't. All right. Uh, hello. And then this guy as well. Yeah, this section could be it. particularly annoying because these guys love to run around and hide all over. Uh, but this is also where you're going to see a lot of pull throughs and collaterals here. And that's basically, like, once again, what uh, doing the fights fast comes down to is just making the most out of your launches and managing your resources between ammo and energy. And we have a tanky guy here who throws a nade. Very nice. And we're good. I'm I meant to nice. ask, um, do these clip outs get easier at like higher FPS and like what's sort of like the drop off right there? Is no. Like, so, easier at higher FPS, so that doesn't actually uh, affect it at all. In fact, for any tricks that are FPS based, it's better to have lower FPS like um, with uh, slightly the gunny, but when it comes to clip outs, it's usually based off of the object that you're using to clip out. So yeah, from there's my some objects the... that are like way better than others. Okay. But yeah, that's what usually makes it to easy. Hasn't, hasn't done much. All right. Um, here's Where's definitely the time? best boss in the game. Oh, I say you say worst, I say best. Uh, this is Golden <laughs> Coffee. He gives us the most, the least interesting ability in the game, which is just mind control. Uh, mm -hmm. Ooh, mind control, um, which basically just lets us you know, damage enemies uh, at low HP and we turn them to fight for us. Which is cool in theory, but unfortunately, this boss can only be damaged by these guys. And the AI is very, they have very poor aim, so we might be here for a minute. Yep, this is completely random, and you can lose like 40 seconds if you're unlucky. Like, he actually killed that guy. But yeah, watch this. I can't do any damage to him. It just bounces off him. Oh, your so. boy's doing some work. Never mind, your boy's done. Yep, and if they get behind a wall, they shoot straight through the wall. <laughs> that guy missed his melee. I actually forgot about this level. It's like, yes, you have an army. Oh, nice. It's an army of stormtroopers, so good luck with that. Exactly. Well, that actually wasn't that bad. I've had that yeah. go way worse. Yeah. Uh, for reference, that was five seconds worse than my PB, and that was 50 seconds worse than my uh, best time on that, so my golds. So that's how much of a big variance that is. Oh, wow. But fortunately, we get more ability points for finishing that, so that makes things a bit easier in the next sections. Easier than any percent, that is. Yeah, that's kind of like the really gonna, nice thing. I was going to ask how much, like, because I haven't watched nearly as many uh, runs of this as any percent. Uh, like, how much, like, more powerful do you get comparatively with any, like, compared to any percent since you're doing a lot more? You can max out health, I believe. You can max out a lot of stuff. You can max out energy, launch, and health, and get the uh, other abilities that we need. So it's you really get the good. Launch upgrades that let you pick up uh, Nade. Also, this elevator goes sideways. Especially. Yeah, <laughs> just a fun yeah, fact. I feel like there was a comedy skit with an elevator that went sideways. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Another control point to claim. And now we're going to be Marshall, but Marshall is basically going to say, hey, we need to create more of uh, these HRAs, which are the Hedron Resonance Anchors. They're basically what is making it so people are not turning into the Hist and they're staying normal people for the most part. Um, so they're very, very important because otherwise people would be turning into the bad guys, which uh, we don't want because that would mean that they're trying to kill us and we don't like that. So we need to make more of them and they can only be made with one uh, thing. And that's the thing that we're trying to fight. Um, also, I'm trying to keep the last enemy to be in front of me and die this way because that will manipulate the spawns of these enemies. These enemies will basically just kind of float at you and uh, explode when they get nearby anything. These guys also have a knack for creeping up behind your back. And yep, uh, putting you to one HP. Stuck on stuff. Yeah. That was a pretty good fight, actually. But here's another, our second mini boss, I believe. We call him Big Boy, because uh, the <laughs> rangers here call him. Say, oh, that's a big boy. Uh, yeah. But here, here you're gonna see like one of the main reasons we play on this patch, which I don't know if we've mentioned. We play on the earliest patch version available, 
Um, but but that is to allow us to do physics flip out, but also the uh, shielded enemies like this only take one hit from launch for some reason. Uh, whereas on later patches they take two. But uh, this is where he's looking to get as many pull throughs and whatnot as possible. He's also trying to look forward so the random adds spawn up by the control point here. And yeah, he made short work out of everyone. That was really fast actually. Yeah, that was a really good one. Also, we got a negative 12. Oh, oh that's nice. There yeah. Is. Yeah, so in and this And we got enough also... for uh, Pierce. Let's go. All right, this is the run. <laughs> so uh, in this level, we're actually looking for level two mods and specifically dodge efficiency. This is the first level that we have a good chance of getting level two mods. And so a minus 12 dodge efficiency lets us stuff in an extra launch, or sorry, not launch, dash, and do you know, our energy bar. Okay. It runs up. Um, yeah, this, and then is the, this is the variance that I was talking about. Here, like, uh, different upgrades. And most of the things around here. Yeah, um, it usually isn't enough to like make or break a run, but it is nice to have. Uh, mm -hmm. The crafting materials, though, we need those to craft weapons. And so earlier he was talking about crafting the sniper rifle, and we we just saw that we have enough to craft that. So it's just, it's very nice. It saves a lot of time. Uh, later it on. saves a lot of time and makes the fights a lot easier and safer for the most part. Um, basically, the bosses that we fight, Pierce really helps out. Like, it lets us skip a cycle for a boss at some point. It makes one of the fights way more consistent. It's really, really nice to have. Um, and yeah, the only sure. way that you can get the materials pretty much is in the research section. And we don't come here again until the end of the game. Yeah. Um, this is, uh, by the way, the best worst puzzle in the game <laughs> i still don't know how you're supposed to solve this casually it's i just i've memorized it at this point I, yeah it's it's something something with the There's different white boards just use your eyes or something um but yeah so all of that was to uh like demonic said we were trying to find the hra lab the peak hedron resonance amplifiers unfortunately it's broken or out of black rock i believe so we have to go and find more of said black rock material uh which is going to be in the maintenance sector mm -hmm. uh, yeah so what happens is there we had a piece but it shattered so now we need to find another piece black rock is basically anti-scp so it just makes anomalous things just not work because oh, I didn't know reasons that. yep because reasons fair enough it's as good a reason as any i suppose <laughs> for sure it makes as much sense as everything else in this game um, that's true yeah why why is jesse the only one that can use it reasons why is the bullet lodged in the director's head allowing us to communicate with him reasons the reasons yeah Help save everyone. All right, so now we're on threshold. The reason that this mission is called threshold isn't because um, the developers were trying to like think of something. It's because speedrunners uh, will die here for the most part. This is the threshold for whether or not you have an actual run. Right out of the gate, we have this interesting. Oh, for nice. Oh, that was nice. That was really fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was called Boxy McFloaty. Um, it works by uh, half damaging that box and then getting it stuck on Jessie's upper torso and then dropping it will just push her straight up. So we pushed through a hole in the ceiling actually that uh, let, us, let us skip this section, skip that yeah. uh, turbine ring. That hole is normally like a shortcut, so it's normally, it's designed, like this game is designed for you to like go through areas over and over again when you gain new abilities. So it's kind of like a shortcut, like a Metroid game, but we just take advantage of that by flying through it. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the main thing with this game that makes a lot of the stuff worse is when Jesse is stuck in an object of some kind, no matter what the object is, uh, the game will want to push her upwards in order to get her out of it. Um, and that's how a lot of the stuff works. Unless it's a solid wall. I was yeah. gonna say that this game, it, like, in terms of, like, being a Metroidvania-style speedrun, it's pretty interesting how, like, there's some sequence breaking where the game's pretty lenient. Uh, you know, like, that sort of thing, like, skipping right to the motel there, but then there's other stuff where, like, you have to go around and hit all those different triggers, otherwise the game's like, nah, dude, you just cannot go where you need to, need to go yeah, to. There's, like, a bunch of other very things interesting. that need to unfold. Yeah, for sure. Um, oh, I never anyway. had that happen. Uh oh. Okay, so this is our, this is actually the the second skip uh, here. We call this Who's a Reach B two because the first version sucked. Um, <laughs> as soon oh, as God, he gets his was... barrel clip, 
Yeah, it was, yeah it was this, horrible. This barrel clip is actually not as bad as what we used to originally do. Um, but that, this is like the old who is a reach skip was the like main like joke of this level being the threshold because that glitch was just very bad. This one is slightly better. It's not better. It's not great, but it's slightly better. Well, you only have to just, you know, dash really far out of bounds and take a few leaps of faith where I, instead of, you know, hope the prop lets you out of bounds. Um, oh, we got it. Yeah, we got it. So, very nice. Yeah, you actually fell right in for it. Uh, I've always streamed around. Uh, I'm not sure how that works. Okay, Apparently, it's consistent. Sure. But yeah, that was yeah. called Tuesday. Yeah, actually, it's like about <laughs> Yeah, so between that skip and the skip we did in an earlier level, we never meet a character named Arish. So, who's Arish? Yeah. Also, these are his distorted. This one is like the best one because it just stands there. Um, basically, what it'll do though later on is it'll just turn invisible and then just go wherever it wants and you lose track of it and it does a lot of damage. Um, this game has one shot protection. So let's say an enemy would do 120% of your health as damage. Um, the game will only let it do 99 to you and then it'll like put you in a one shot state. And then if you get hit again, you die, but it's basically not going to kill you immediately from full health to nothing which is very very good for us because it's the only way we really can you know uh do this run without having to get like a bunch of upgrades yeah uh i believe the only time you can actually die you know from, from enemy damage is when the screen is uh red yeah bloody but um that distorted i think it's called a distorted uh will one shot you basically like it'll bring you immediately to the one shot state no matter what your level is or what your health is if it hits you and especially with how like aggressive some of the enemies are in this game and like how there's very little ways to actually like regen health it's, it's a definitely a welcome mechanic you yep. of health regen did we even talk about that? no if you want to go over you can yeah so the way you regenerate health is by dealing uh damage to enemies Dealing damage or killing them, they will drop these little blue dots. Uh, you have to pick those up. Those will, those will regen you to full HP. Um, it's it's very like it, it promotes a very aggressive uh, style of gameplay. Uh, so you definitely want to be pushing up into their face and doing as much damage as you can uh, to stay alive. Otherwise, you will get shot and die. Yeah, because it's yeah. like normally when you're in, in like a low health situation, you know, I think a lot of people's instinct very much is to like back off and play safe. But in, in this game, yeah. it's like, nah, you just have to go in. You and definitely want to just, just like play. a lot of confidence and like adaptation really is rewarded in these runs quite a bit. Like, I mean, there's obviously stuff that you guys can control with, um, you know, no pun intended again, uh, with like the spawns and everything and just knowing where objects are. But, you know, even you saw like those little deviations very early on that Demonic had to do in some of those fights. Like, but the confidence that he had in doing them really was what uh, helped him just pull them off pretty cleanly. That's a good way of explaining it. Uh, here's a yep. very annoying section of the game where you have to throw the power cubes into the holes. Um, these enemies shoot rockets and these rockets are homing because why wouldn't they? And yeah, even though this is a common basic damage. enemy, yeah, they have homing rockets. That's the common enemy in this. <laughs> uh, but yeah, already so... said that was reasons, right? It's just reasons. <laughs> reasons, exactly. Um, but yeah, so we now have obtained a sample of Blackrock, and we are going to return to Marshall and tell her that we got it. And now she's going to tell us where our brother is. Mm-hmm. You know, the whole reason we're here. I do think it's funny that, like, we're basically playing, like, the Aaron boy, even though we're, the, we're, like, the director. So, like, we, like, went to them, and we're like, we want to see our brother, and they're like, you gotta deal with this first. And Jesse's just like, fine, I'll deal with that first. <laughs> uh, this fine, is like, right. this is like the director being sent to, like, get their own cup of coffee, essentially. Like, they told, they told yeah. the intern, like, yeah, so I, I'm really kind of parched, and the intern's like, then go and get a cup of coffee. Like, you go do it. Yeah. All right. Now we are in the containment section. Um, in this area, we used to do a glitch called My Brother's Neum. Um, it was really cool tech. Uh, we don't use it anymore because we realized that despite us using it for like several months, it actually wasn't as fast as we thought it was. 
<laughs> so we were basically oh, no. like doing this really cool really hard trick for super long that would totally kill your runs and it didn't save any time at all shout out to Tantu for uh testing and determining <laughs> Uh, well, but, but it's fine. Cool we have factor. a new noon skip. Uh, we need this control point though, especially for all bosses. We gotta come back here later. Yeah. Uh -oh. In our old did route, we would skip this. Spot? It did, but I just quit out and get yeah. it back. Yeah, so we actually needed the forklift that blew up there. And usually the debris doesn't despawn, but it did here. He can just reload. In the meantime, we're gonna make sure that I can get this. I can, let's go. All right, that is a big relief. That is our uh, sniper upgrade, basically. So now we can swap between the pistol upgrade or the pistol and the sniper um, whenever we want. Um, that's gonna be really useful for later on when we're fighting some more um, harder bosses. Is Pierce your favorite upgrade, like, like outside of runs or? Um, no, I would say that... Oh, that's not the object I meant to grab. I would say it's probably Shatter. Um, Shatter is the shotgun upgrade, and that one's really fun to do. Yeah, oh, wow. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. That's fine. Uh, let's try that again. No one saw anything. We're doing another <laughs> skip here. This is kind of a variant of my brother's Neum. Um, we are going to be Neuming, but it's not going to be a very far one. Yeah, then... just, just there. That little warp was called a Neum. Uh, from what we under... Oh, well, first, uh, what he's doing here is he's dropping down into the end of the motel puzzle, which, you know, because because reason, once again, the motel yeah. fort is so, just active the entire time. Yeah, so the Ocean View Motel, which is that object, right, or that area right there, um, normally the game teleports you to it, and you can only teleport to it, like, in the in-game universe. But because it's loaded in, like, we can just go out of bounds, go to wherever it is in the, you know, in the out of bounds, and then just get like that, which is really nice. I believe we can do that with every motel from here on out, right? Yes. Make every motel we need. Yep, we can just completely skip all of them. So now we are introduced to Langston, someone we're going to be seeing a few times in this room. Yeah. I um, also want to mention what a Neum is. So a Neum is when you try to mantle onto an object where the game doesn't know where to put you after you mantle. So it puts you at the 000, zero coordinates of the loaded cell that you are in. And this loaded cell uh, could be out of bounds, for example, if the 00, zero coordinates are there. Um, so basically it just teleports us because it doesn't know where else to put us. Yeah, that's our but understanding at least. Yep. In the meantime, though, we got a little elevator section, so I hope everyone's doing well and enjoying the run. Um, Eggdices, how are you liking it so far? It's nice. I like uh, the names of a lot of these tricks. I was oh, going to yeah. say, man, like the control community really goes above and beyond when they name all their skips. Like, I just was <laughs> like, man, the Devil May Cry community, we're just lame by comparison. They're out here with like Boxy McFloaty and My Brother's Noom. And in Devil May Cry, we're like, Mission 9 skip, dude. Sick. <laughs> yeah. I will say Brian Otto, uh, they're a big contributor to a lot of the cool uh, skip names. All right, gonna grab this. Also, that's Philip over there. Normally at 8%, we just say hi to him and move on. Um, but we're actually gonna go help him out later. It's great. Uh, we actually get to see Philip finally. It's the number one reason to run this category, just to get Philip in peace. Oh, that's not um, great. First, we have probably uh -oh. the coolest cutscene in the game. It's also unskippable. But I don't really mind. Yeah, at least in this route that we're doing. Um, there is a route called Shieldy, or that uses a glitch called Shieldy, uh, but we're not using that because it's still pretty new tech and it's very difficult and very random. There's also a lot of loading stream. Yes. I'm yeah, trying this to is think a... about why this cutscene is like unskippable because I, I guess it it transforms the surrounding I, area, but it does. So it tra oh, I also like how the seat just kind of you know pops up right yeah, there. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's unskippable because some some designer was like, I mean, I'll be damned if they skip this one. <laughs> yeah. I, I spent eight months just working on this cutscene and this cutscene alone. They are not going to skip it. I mean, look how cool it is, man. That's yeah. true, yeah. I think the reason is because it actually is literally changing the geometry of the level. Yeah, probably. It changes it into that, like, intro of every Bond movie, like the, the sniper scope. Yeah. That's what mm. it looks like. So, All right. This is our third boss, Salvador. 
This is usually the only boss we fight in any percent, but this is the third in this category. Uh, he's kind of like Big Boy, where he's got a kinetic shield that we can just zap away with launch. Uh, the, the big issue is usually the adds here, actually. He's able to drop them at random and just sneak up on you when you suspect it. And this fight especially, I think, is where like 0.9, so like 0 0.96 comes into play, right? Because of like all the shield regeneration that he does. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it also lets you get an early hit in before you drop. Um, although I don't know oh, how, much, how much that really helped. But that was actually a good fight. Uh, and then you just have to deal with all the ads and oh, that's a nice energy recovery. This run's mm -hmm. got some pretty insane mods, I'm not gonna lie. Yep. Also, you didn't even use Pierce. <laughs> I was gonna I say like that. I like using Pierce bad fight. No, yeah. Oh. There we go. We got pulled through. Their own, nice. Yeah. Very nice. A lot of double kills uh, and like tri some triple kills in a lot of these fights. Really clean. Okay. Um, but and now, now we, we touch have... a TV and we can fly. Yep. We now have the ability to fly. And uh, the running theme with this game is every ability we get, we immediately are using to break the game right after uh so like right here we're just gonna skip past the tutorial section i honestly wonder if they intended for this or not they had to have otherwise they would have put it, it looks pretty there. free yeah i kind of feel like that's the whole point is to have like a convoluted area on the left but i couldn't have been the only one who just thought you had to like walk all the way through it And now we can go back to menu. Nice. So and now, once again, we use Levitate to skip right to Dylan's cell. Yeah, so this is the, gonna be the part of the game that is like really going to change. Uh, after we do this part right here, this is where it's gonna change very much from the uh, any percent route. Because right now, um, except for like one or two areas, we weren't really like doing much different from the any percent route. Here is where it really changes. This is kind of the point of the game where you, like all the missions kind of opened up to you and you leveled up to a point where it makes sense to go out and do them. So that's why we do it or wait to this point. Yep. But now we are doing another boss and this is gonna be one of my favorite bosses, especially playing it. Um, uh, through my first playthrough, this was like one of my favorites. Uh, we're gonna go meet Philip and go help him out with his little problem. So Philip cool. is currently on shift to, for fridge duty, which means he has to stare at that fridge consistently for until he is like relieved from his position. Um, he's been staring at that fridge for 24 hours. Um, I'm not sure if anybody knows um, SCP lore, but SCP-173, if you don't know, the gimmick of it is that you have to stare at this thing, otherwise it'll, uh, you know, kill you if you aren't staring at it, because it only moves when no one's looking. And the fridge is kind of very similar to that. And uh, Langston here, you know, just completely forgot about Philip, so just, you know, kind of let him just hang out there for an entire day, um, where he can do literally nothing but stare at that fridge. And Langston's like, just like, oh, my bad. Here, I'll just open the door for you. Do you think Do that he this. could, like, look in the fridge for some snacks or what? <laughs> um, I don't think you want to open that fridge. I mean, just call me crazy, but... I mean, there could yeah, be, like, I don't know, Phillip, dude. Fortunately for Philip, the fridge had other plans for him. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh... Yeah, this is kind of a cool in, in boss, the game though. Story, yeah, in, yeah this... in the game story, the that object was acting up because this guy was in it, as you'll see in a second here. And I agree, this is definitely one of the coolest looking bosses. Yeah, this the boss coolest is looking like... Boss. This boss is like super ominous, even though it looks like a, a tentacle with like a pilot light on it. <laughs> That's that a two cycle really, on it too. That wow. Was really good. That well was like, like that perfect. was really good. Yeah, so that was a uh, former one. He could be really annoying or he could be not really annoying. Um, but getting a two cycle there is extremely rare. Uh, normally it's a four cycle. So oh, wow, I'm pretty happy yeah. with that. Dang. But yeah, we just got some very lucky pull throughs and uh, and damage on the uh, crit spots. 
And the, I think that the, um, you said that the extra pool there that you got from, what was it, it was something, right? You get like an extra pool, or was that just like later down the line that helps? Uh, that? no, the extra dodge is what we get. So that extra dodge okay. thing, whoops. All right, so we're talking to Langston again because we need to get some side missions from him. Um, the side missions will essentially allow us to um, unlock another boss that we need to defeat later on. So we need to complete a side quest before it will give us the option to fight another boss that we need to get. Errands or chores. Also, I'm going to put this on there, and then I think I got that, which is really nice. And then anything else for this, we can put that there. Cool. You got a pretty nice load out coming. Yeah, looking strong. Yep. So, first things first with our errands. Uh, we're basically being sent out to find and cleanse a whole bunch of altered items that have gone, you know, berserk. And, yeah, uh, uh, so really quick. First uh, has anybody is... ever seen Squid Game? <laughs> uh, if you have, no. this is going to look a little familiar. It must be one of the missing Yeah, so this is literally a, a, a game of red light, green light with an actual, you know, uh, traffic light. <laughs> Thankfully, I we always... don't die if we mess up, but... Wow. I love how the uh, objects of power and their, like, respective abilities are kind of connected in some way. Like, in a way that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. I feel like former doesn't really make sense, but... Or it's just like another fridge. extra dimensional entity. Yeah. I mean, did you see how big he was? Like, he's got to eat a lot of food if he's going to, you know, <laughs> be that size. I mean, I guess that's fair, yeah. He saw, like, the rocky road in the freezer, and he was like, I found my power source. <laughs> exactly. All over for you now. <laughs> All right, now we are coming up to the worst part of the game, um, this fight. Fair warning, I might crash here. It does do that sometimes, so hopefully it doesn't, but... That is the thing that does happen occasionally. Um, but yeah, this is uh, Horowitz. He's not having a great day so far. Um, so basically, yeah, he's basically telling us, hey, I'm injured, but there's a medic, you have to go find him. And that's the uh, thing. So we're gonna go well, out we of We don't have time here. for the motel though, so we're just gonna skip to the end of it. It's really also, nice too that the that developers like actually let you like open the menu during a lot of these oh, because God. otherwise like out of bounds navigation would be super difficult like without it. This Before game would be significantly more map. painful. Yeah, if there if we didn't have control of the map as we were doing a lot of this stuff, oh man, this game would be control. infinitely harder because there's times that we're just I don't want to use that. I don't want to use that. There's times where we're like, we are literally just navigating complete pitch black. All right, kill those enemies really quick. And now we're going to meet Wells, who is uh, the medic. So I'll let you explain all this stuff and hopefully nothing bad happens because this is a really, really hard out of bounds. Yes, it's called Wells Fargo. Um... <laughs> because once again, we have the best skip names. Of course, we have to get through some dialogue, right? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, we're banking on it, dude. So, we basically oh need this God. guy to follow us to all, all the way back to logistics at CP we started. Um, but it's slow to actually to, like, do all the fights and bounds, so we're just going to clip out. But we still have to babysit this guy, because if we push too far ahead, we'll actually hit triggers that will, like, softlock the game and put it into a state that we would or we cannot progress at all um he's gonna put the objective tracker on that guy so we can, so we can get an idea of where he is uh and here he's just pushing ahead because he's got to touch one other trigger before we can go back in depth right you're doing the, you're doing that yeah yeah so the trigger is down here and then right next to the door and then he signs up and nice now he's back in depth and this get, brings us to our next uh, object that we have to... Oh, no, never mind. He's gonna no, do we did it later. Okay, gosh. Uh, so, lots of clocks over there. That will be explained later on. And by explain, I mean there's kind of an in-universe explanation. Yeah, do you remember what that is? <laughs> uh, we don't want to spoil it for anyone, so I won't say just yet. Okay, fair enough. <laughs>
The game always like or tries to justify a lot of the stuff, even if its justifications only work in the universe itself. I think the explanation is that these clocks got hands, like literally two of them. Yeah, that's. Oh fair. come on, Cosmic! Um, we don't have time for those jokes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all the out of bounds there was to skip like three or four fights. I think that saves like three minutes. Unfortunately, also, though, we still have to wait on this guy who has the worst AI ever. This is ever. we we hate Wells so much it's insane and infuriating um there is another skip that actually uh, goes completely out of bounds but it's a lot riskier to do so going inbounds there is just significantly safer for sure for sure we do sometimes have to wait on you know him to get through doors yeah just hold the door open for him i just want to know what the walk cycle is supposed to be man like some of those <laughs> yeah. walk cycles he's it looks like he's like like messing up a moonwalk and just doing it forward <laughs> instead. Let's go. Yeah, he's just sliding. <laughs> oh, you got the interaction pretty quickly. He likes to <laughs> juke you there. But uh, we did all that so we could fight this guy, who's our fourth boss, right? Yeah. Yep. Oh, that's okay. Or... Yes. No, he's uh, our fifth. He's our fifth it's boss. our fifth boss. So this is yeah. Horowitz. This is also the first time that we're going to really use Pierce a lot. Pierce against this guy is a lot easier. You can hit the headshot. The hitbox yeah. is on this guy in particular, kind of weird. They're like offset above his head and like kind of on the side. Yeah, I just noticed he fired like basically at thin air there and it still counted. So if you do this fight really well, you can just keep him in a corner and just kind of bully him there for a little while until he dies. But uh, sometimes he does like to get away like this. Don't you mean do this fight really well? <laughs> oh my god, Cosmic, please! <laughs> I'm trying to focus, I can't play with them laughing so hard. <laughs> oh, there we go, that was a good fight. Um, you have to be careful because if he... It. Yeah, if he gets far away, um, he'll actually start spawning enemies. Also, Wells just kind oh, of breaks cool. there. <laughs> oh so no, I didn't if, know if, that. If you thought his walking cycle was jank earlier, then uh, <laughs> it gets worse. But yeah, so that was the uh, one of the bigger like things that we have to do and one of the bigger differences between um, all bosses and any percent. But yeah, this is a really underrated category. Um, Tansu and Bryo, uh, those are both other runners uh, for this game. They like have really pioneered this category and it's a shame not more people run it. Yeah, I was gonna say you see like so much more of the game and it's it's really good I think for games to have longer categories like this where a lot of content is skipped in any percent and you know it, Being a metroidvania you naturally want to explore a lot of the map and all bosses really not only just shows you more of the map It just shows you like a lot more of the fights and you get to see a little bit more of the combat and everything So it's pretty cool. I am a just wait till you see Honda True, yeah um so what we did right there is we cleansed a cool looking chair and now we are going to go to dead letters um right now we're doing the runaways mission so this was a side quest that we got from langston who was the uh dude that left philip behind to die um he basically sent us like oh crap a bunch of these scp objects broke out of containment um can you go grab them for us and jesse of course just can't say no to her staff yeah why would she she only runs the place <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is like the, uh, yeah, I, I think Facebook had a huge power out. This is like if Mark Zuckerberg was in the server rooms trying to fix it. This is basically <laughs> like the equivalent of what we're doing here. Yeah, so we need to collect these letters in order to, uh, in order to continue on. But this is like one of my favorite areas as well, because it normally, this is like one of the first few areas that we, you know, you go to at the very beginning of the game and you don't really have access to this entire upper area, which is like no, wow. kind of where the Metroidvania aspects come in, because now that we have flying, we can get this entire area now with us. You know how long it took before I noticed there was all of that up above me in that room? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, it took me a long time I felt as well. So dumb. I don't think I noticed it until I started watching runs. That's fair. <laughs> Here we go. Now we are going to be going to Seal Threshold Corridor. It's sometimes hard to remember oh. like where you need to teleport to. 
We're on to our seventh boss, the anchor, right? Yes, my least Double favorite check. boss casualty. Well, you have Pierce, so that lets us show off cycle skip. That does. All right, so we're gonna do a very similar uh, out of bounds that we did earlier. Nope, that's not gonna work. This cart is very scary because I cannot throw it. I have to drop it. If I throw it, uh, I die. Yeah, watch out, dude. That's flammable. Well, it just blows up and you have to reload. And it's in there. Yeah, uh, um, so this the thing first. protects itself. Yeah, um, if you get a good hit on it, like right about... No, not there. Uh, you can actually like get a really good uh, thing where you just have to knock like one thing and grab it. Sometimes you need to do five things. It's really annoying. That's oh, pretty quick. Yeah, so now we've done all of that uh, stuff for Langston. Um, so now we could go back to him, but we're going to be doing that later on. Uh, for now, we're going to go fight another boss. Um, this is where all the clocks came from. They just continuously replicate nonstop. So they shut off this section of the uh, area completely. Um, these clocks are controlled by that anchor. And that anchor is controlled by, uh, by that thing. Hold on, if someone could explain to me the relationship between the anchor and clocks, that would, uh, because I don't care. Oh, uh, man, that ship's already sailed. We're on to the boss fight okay, now. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, what Pierce lets us do is get two hits early on in, uh, this fight. Oh, I didn't know it was two. Yeah. Whoops, oh well. Yeah, you can do two, <laughs> and you can get two hits in on these, like, or one, like, or one hit on this, like, but that's fine. Oh, well. This is uh, definitely, you know, my least favorite boss personally because it is just an auto scroller. If you were literally stuck waiting for, you know, it to open up, so you can throw the clock in and then just move on to the next one. Uh, it's very like a, frustrating uh, a crash as well. Brand Bandicoot level. Yeah, and I mean, you, I died a few times when learning this because one hit from that guy is uh, pretty, pretty brutal. Um, like that, but we're right, okay. Yeah, I was gonna like say that. right there, like that. Commentator's curse. Oh, oh we're good. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I was only what, like four, four or five cycle. Yeah, only four. That's about so, as fast. Still as pretty it can good. Get. And now I just need to cleanse it and done. Wait, I gotta wait for it to pop up. There we go. Boss nice. number seven out of the way. All right, prime candidate. We are going to be going back into the main story now, which is really nice. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to grab that. I think I can grab that. No, I cannot. But we yeah, will continue so, back on to Central Executive. So to catch up on what happened was we were sent to the Panopticon to find your brother. Uh, we went up to his cell and, oh, what do you what do you know? The princess is in another castle. Apparently he left his cell, just walked out, and is all the way back in Central Executive. So. We're gonna talk to him and see what's up, and he's gonna then send us back to containment to learn more about. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So um, we've seen how the hiss like has affected a lot of the other people here, and we find out that the hiss has just absolutely decimated Dylan's hairline, and this is like the biggest <laughs> yeah. affront that the hiss has had. So we know that we really have to do something about this soon. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go back to the Quinta menu. Um, another thing is also he has been infected by the hiss because he didn't have the HRA, but obviously he's still kind of there, but not really. Um, fun fact, uh, Dylan is a lot of where you get the lore for um, the fact that this is actually in the same universe as both Alan Wake and Max Payne, or at least the same multiverse is how it works. Um, here we go, where am I supposed to go again? I'm supposed to go to logistics. But yeah, he mentions a lot about a um, a writer and a uh, uh, in another universe, a, a cop from New York. So that's where a lot of their ties are in. Uh, it's kind of a shame that they can't actually make connections to Quantum Break because I'm sure it would be really good. But sadly, that's a Microsoft owned IP. Licensing issues. Um, but anyway, yeah. so Dylan sent us to, you know, investigate the prime candidate program and we just don't have time for that. So yeah. we're just going to go around it as best we can. Uh, this is definitely like the biggest and maybe one of the oldest skips found is because this basically skips the entire chapter uh, from Out of Bounds. All we need to hit are three triggers. The first one's going to be coming up at the bottom of this elevator here. He's going to drop down and just touch the ledge and leap off of it. Oh no! Oh, no! I have it? not messed that up in a long time. Yeah, no, it happens oh, to well. everyone. That's a very tricky jump. 
I was gonna yeah. say that looks like there's barely so, any anything out of bounds there. Yeah, you can basically to. like if you don't hit that at the right angle, what ends up happening is exactly that. Um, I still think we hit it though, so I think because of that, I don't need to do it again. Yeah, you probably but, hit the trigger, but but yeah, um, the animation that Jesse's in uh, caused him to slip off because she because her feet weren't like down in front of her, so instead of uh, like letting you land for a sec, you just slipped right off. Oh, man. Come on. Very interesting how the game's physics are, but... Yeah, that was the first trigger that we hit. Yeah. So you it's, it's really it's because of how she swings her legs around? Yeah, definitely. Or... Come again? You said it's because of like, how she swings her legs around when she's like floating? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, like if you let go of W, the animation she goes into like sort of swings oh. her legs back. Yeah, like that. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's really cool. And then there, it's in front of her. Yeah. They're very nice. Just show photo a little mm -hmm. bit. <laughs> First try yeah. every time. I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> but yeah, so that was the first trigger. The next trigger is actually across this big old room here. But um, this one is really it, easy to hit. Like, I've never missed it. And now that yeah, I said that, I'm going to jinx it. myself. Yeah, you're going to jinx gonna it. I was going to say, man. <laughs> but, don't uh, play it's with right fire. Over, it's right over this orange light. Um, once you go over it. And at this point, we're basically just following the rest of the like level from out of bounds. There is a way to actually be one to the end here, but since we can't see, we just follow the map. Better to be safe than sorry. Indeed. Um, so then from here, we go out over to this green light, and that's our third and final trigger. And then we come in here, and this is the dump. This is the where the if everything you know happened properly, then the fight's going in, which it did. Very nice. Uh, I think the worst thing about that skip, though, is you come from out of bounds and have to do this fight. And if you die, then you're run over, pretty much. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, so he's going to play it very safe here and sort of camp out on top of it. I always forget I have pierced him, so he's not used to having it. Yeah, oh. I, I know exactly what you mean. I'm sorry he threw that when he didn't have a shield on. That's weird. That was a lot of damage, too. Yeah, you got that headshot mod on it too, so it's absolutely like shredding. Very nice. And there's the there's the Tomasi enemies as well that you were talking about, how they just sort of transition to like a, a normal mob. Yeah, yeah I feel like, we got these guys I like they did that with a lot of the bosses in the game. It's, I generally find it pretty interesting when games do that, where they take like a very early boss and then transition it to a normal mob. Like, yeah, you're stronger now. You should be able to deal with this all the time. Yeah. <laughs> And that's and, our final yeah. enemy. And that's, you know, face of the enemy. I think that's casually the longest mission, maybe. And speedrun wise, it's the shortest really mission. The reason it's the <laughs> shortest mission and the reason that it was found like so early to, you know, be like easily skipped is because it's one of the few missions where other than that like red trigger that I hit, you pretty much, there are no triggers that are like really bad that you have to hit. All right, now we are going to Central Research. So we're going to advance we the story a little bit more. Uh, right now we're going to be doing Finnish Tango. So um, this is normally a really cool, like, part casually of the game that's involving Ati, the mysterious Finnish janitor. Um, however, we are going to be skipping about 95% of it. Uh, so because, yeah, so we're know, coming back to, yeah, we're coming back to a part of the game we were at earlier. Uh, we're actually going to be clipping out again with the same object we did before. Yep, in a different spot at least. In a different spot, yeah, that's fair. There. There. We're using this to get to the fire break, uh, which lets us skip uh, a fight in research sector. I don't know how much time that saves, maybe like 90 seconds. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty significant. Um, but then we get to the end here, and that's gonna give it, uh, we're, we're gonna be going into the Astray Maze. <laughs> And if you play this game casually, you will know what the Astray Maze is, but uh, I'm sorry to say we're going to be skipping almost all of it. We're only getting the CP because we need it for a skip later on. Go play the game because that, that Astray Maze is like one of the <laughs> sickest parts of the whole game, if not yeah, the sickest. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. It really we haven't is. played this game and it looks interesting by all means. It's kind of a good thing that we skip it because then you don't get to see it and you can experience it in all its glory, like completely spoiler free. All right, now we're gonna do another clip out here. Again, this is kind of a very similar thing where we can pretty much just go to the end of the level. 
uh, from this area. We get to go out of bounds, say hi to the scream you hiss ball things that try to murder you with their mind. It's great. Yeah, usually in any percent, once you get, uh, once you finish my brother's keeper, I say this is where we fly to the end of the game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, unfortunately, this, this might be like my least favorite level, to be honest, because it's just a whole lot of waiting. Yeah, unfortunately, there is another waiting section that uh, cannot be really that fun. All right, yeah, so, so we're going to be hit this doing, button. Yeah, 143. 90 seconds from now, there's going to be a trigger on the other side that will activate. But uh, we're just going to go ahead and go to get over there. That's safer. Surprisingly, this was yet. not dev intended, though, because if you do yeah. this casually, you'll soft lock. Yeah, it took a it took a really long time before we figured out what the what the deal was with this. Yeah, originally like they would like get onto the elevator, press the button to go back, do some other stuff, shoot some like things, move around, and then do it. And then we realized that it was oh, it's just a ninety second timer. Yeah, so exactly ninety seconds from now, he's gonna fly back out, uh, touch a trigger, and then come back, and then we can progress the game. Not yeah, because sure we need to go that like way, that. but yeah, if we don't go that way, though, without hitting the trigger that's on here that doesn't spawn in until that is in the right spot, uh, it soft locks. Yeah, we'll know when we can progress whenever he comes back and you see the multimedia file up here in the lower right. Mm -hmm. but, uh, for now, we just have to... Well, how is everyone? Yep. Hope everyone's doing well. Um, once again, I'm Demonic Robots. Um, if you want to see more of this, I also stream the other categories and other games at twitch.tv slash demonic robots. Um, Cosmic, you want to plug yourself as well? Sure. If you want to see action games uh, like Devil May Cry, No More Heroes, Vanquish, uh, you can find me at www.twitch.tv slash decosmic, and my YouTube is decosmicruns. There's something up ahead. And there we go. We got the multimedia file, so we hit the uh, trigger. And uh, we learned that even though all of this stuff is going on in the oldest house, you know, people are dying, you know, the world could end. Um, Aki's just on holiday. He's just on vacation. He's just vibing. Cracking open a cold one and, you know, enjoying the water. But he does give us a gift. He does give us a gift called the Walkman. And uh, that lets us uh, get out of here. Those are supposedly the keys to the ashtray maze, but you're not going to see what they, like, how they work here. Yep. Uh, are you doing Polaris, or...? Not right now yet, nope. Okay, so we're going to be doing more something bosses. else. Yes, so now we're going to be doing some all-boss routing. Um, so we're actually going to go to the Panopticon, and now that we've completed the first set-aside quest, we're going to get the second set-aside quest from Langston, but we're not going to finish them. What it does is it unlocks another object where we can fight another boss. So, I mean, thankfully, we this don't have to do all uh, of them. We just need to do one of the four items. This is uh, former two, right? Yes, mm -hmm. this is. So we're fighting former again. Um, so I think he's the ladder, only boss right? repeated. Instead of former, it's for, this is the latter. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I get it, I get it. All right, oh, this uh -huh, isn't the only uh -huh. boss repeated. Thank you <laughs> for you burying me. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's why we brought that's... Cosmic on, because he just makes straight puns like that. <laughs> it's unfortunate that you have to do all those errands just to get to this guy again. I mean, at least you get to see these cool environments, though. Yeah, uh, even if they do kind of make the you duck. motion sick. Oh yeah, we don't get to show off the duck. That's kind of a shame. I mean, the duck's the worst one. All right, so this arena is a little bit smaller, and this one's a little bit more aggressive. So definitely gotta play it more careful. Hey, bud. It's it's so menacing, dude. This is I think this is definitely like the in terms of like like straight up like horror imagery. I feel like this is like one of the like the big peaks of the game in terms it's of just so like big. when I when I saw this thing for the first time, I was just like, oh my goodness! It's like I just jumped. <laughs> Full worm alien thing. Yep. 
I mean, the pile of light was what scared me, dude. I was like, did I leave my Elden on? Yeah. Um, also, <laughs> another thing that we don't really mention, uh, he can destroy the arena that you're on, so you really want to kill him quickly, and you want to be careful to not fall into one of those holes. Because uh, if you do, you basically are dead with no recovery. Yeah, that's especially true. if you don't throw, like, his, his balls back at him, then, like, you're taking a lot of damage, and he starts destroying the arena, and you're just like, oh, no. And you just wander off. Yeah, it, it can get really painful really quick. Uh, I've definitely wandered off like that that platform a few times trying to avoid the destruction that he did to it when I played the game casually. It's not a good feeling, let me tell you. No, not at <laughs> no. all. Here we uh, go. So we are going to fight. Essence? Yes, I'll explain this. Yes, this, this um, is exactly what we're doing. Yeah, yeah so uh, first we have a skip called Picks. Uh, why it's called Picks, we'll see in a second, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, so if you can, can tell from the name of the boss, Essage is uh, basically like a boss of the sure. mirror world that we're going to mm -hmm. be going into. But this is... Uh, I expect chat to be typing Picks. backwards in this section, by the way. Yeah. Because uh, that's what this section is. Um, basically, it's a mirror world. So we're fighting Essage, which is Jesse backwards. So you can guess what the boss looks like. Uh, but this is Pix. This gives the puzzle to actually unlock it. Because in universe, you know, this is a mirror world. So, of course, the world is going to be right behind this wall. Um, this is kind of similar <laughs> to uh, the old Who is a Reach skip. Uh, this object we can't clip forward with. We just need to clip forward like that. There we go. And uh, now we're in the mirror world. Easy. You go back and touch that trigger. And, well, I was just supposed to Game Boy speak for itself. Yeah, yep. that's not good. So if you don't know, Jesse's talking backwards, like literally, like completely reversed. Um, there's actually a really cool like uh, multimedia file, which is one of my favorite, where if you listen to it in the real world, the guy is talking backwards. But if you listen to it in this world, the guy's talking normally. Oh, that's really cool. Now, and does the game like handle this? Like there's actually like the models and everything behind these doors and all that. Like when that's playing like that little cinematic that's there. Or is that just like I... a mirror thing? I don't know actually. Cause, it, Cause I know that like there was a thing with like PS2 games was where like when they wanted to do a mirror world like this or like stuff like this was happening like on like, the mirror side of things. They would just like model out the yes. whole thing. Yeah, some of the cuts, uh, I know what you're talking about. There's a cut scene where you see Jesse in the mirror and they actually just put another Jesse in there. And you know, because if you switch outfits, uh, you still see her in the normal civilian costume. Huh. Which is weird because the game is uh, the RTX killer app. So <laughs> I don't know yeah. why they use that hack. <laughs> And I take it that these teleports that she's doing are like totally random. It's just kind of like a 50 50. No, they're not random. The other. Um, yeah, so there's four phases, and she spawns on uh, like each one on an opposite end of the room. So she spawned on that end this time, and now she's going to spawn on the other end. Yeah, you already okay. know. Very nice. Um, and this All boss right. is also supposed to be like ourselves, so she actually has uh, like all the abilities and weapons we do. I mean, not, not the ones that we have unlocked, but the ones that we could Ooh. get access to. Uh-oh. Also, she can really do a lot of damage. We're being really lucky right now. Uh, she can one-shot you pretty easily if you're not careful. Also, I and think she she's kind of messes up, up your... Uh... There we go. Yeah, she's, got the, she's got the second weirdest headshot hitboxes as well. It's very hard to headshot. Um, but yeah, yeah. so th that's the boss. Now we just have to climb the mirror. And here is where you'll see that. Yeah, that's where they use that hack. Oh, they put in okay. a second model there. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And now we have cleansed the mirror. I think it'd be really cool if, like, that boss only had what you unlocked. Yeah, so for sure. You could, like, stay, like, you know, downgraded just to make her easier. Oh, yeah, it would make <laughs> it so much better, but sadly we cannot. All right, we are coming up to a very, very big skip. This is called No Smoking. Or kind of. It's also called the Atri May Skip. We have a variety of names. So. Yeah, this oh, one's actually going to be a relatively newer variant of the Atri May. We're going to be using a tech called uh, CP Slam. Mm hmm. Oh, wait, what are you doing? I'm, I'm going to the right one. Oh, I went to the wrong one. Never mind. Just prank. Yeah, All right, let did. me go to the right <laughs> teleportation. Uh, Atri May. There we go. 
Yeah, so we've unlocked an ability, you've seen him use it, called Ground Slam. And what we're trying to do is get a Ground Slam going uh, while interacting with the CP. And we want to get those inputs in like before the menu opens up. And if we okay. did it properly like that, we uh, uh, use the fast travel menu, travel to somewhere else in the same sector. For whatever reason, oh, no. uh, it didn't work. Okay, touch again. the CP. No, touch the CP, quit out, oh, yeah. and reload if it doesn't work. Yeah. This one can be a bit, uh, a bit finicky sometimes with how the game loads. Yeah, Dang. if it's giving me big problems, I'm just going to do the old strat. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Oh, okay. That was yeah, let's try this again. So uh, basically what we're trying to do is, is I'm trying to input like four different inputs to get out of bounds. Uh... This reminds me a lot of the old like ways to get slidey with uh, you know like overlapping the menus and the multimedia files and stuff. Yeah, it's similar to that. There we Very go. Nice. All right. Yeah, Very that's what's nice. supposed to happen. Uh, cause for whatever reason, um, our, we we kind of vaguely understand it, but uh. Like, while you're in the ground slam animation and it's going to load things, it teleports you to the new location, but then it teleports you back. Uh, so while you're, like, fast traveling, it unloads the area around you for a bit, but you you still move in the slam. Oh my god, uh -oh. that's so annoying. Uh-oh. Oh no. You get a death Alright, we'll try that one more time. Yeah, so yeah. if you don't know, there's a lot of death barriers around there, and it's, like, very awkward. Normally, at any percent, we have a very specific set of energy that basically makes it so if we dash through it, like, no matter what, we won't hit them. But um, right there, it's being a little awkward. This happened last time as well, so hopefully I can yeah, recover it pretty I, quick. I don't even know how you, uh, like, what you hit there. That was weird. Because I have more energy than you usually have doing this in uh, Hundo, right? Uh, maybe. Try this one more time. If it doesn't work, I'm just going to do the old way. That's a little bit more consistent. Uh, but yeah, what I was... Uh, what this basically does is uh, it unloads the area that we're in, but we still move with the ground slam, so we'll, so it then immediately loads us, uh, the area back in. Like It keeps us where we are, pretty much. Okay, I'm just going to do the old way. Fair enough. Do fast travel to central research. So now uh, we get to see affects... another fun clip. <laughs> uh oh, we're back to fridge clips now. Oh yeah. The end result is basically the same thing between the two variants. The CP slam is just a lot easier or more consistent usually. Does the CP slam version like how much time does that save over this? Fifteen to twenty seconds. Oh, very good. Nice chunk. It's like less area you have to travel. Or less distance rather. Yeah, the S stream just right. has a lot of death barriers. That's why and the right there he, get, he gets pushed really up because he's, he's in that wall, right? He's, he just gets pushed right to the top. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Man, I haven't done this in a while, so I'm I'm glad it's going a little bit better. So basically we're going really far out to avoid hitting any of the uh, the death triggers. But um, there's, we're doing is, a slightly different is. variance with this because now we can just kind of go back and bounce. This is definitely Raining like the perfect. one skip where you like are really glad but you have the map to actually see where you're going because is her model unloaded like at this point or is it like it's very, not it's but just... it's still pitch black so that's like definitely not good but yeah. yeah like trying to find your keys in the dark exactly but yeah that still worked out pretty well even if we didn't get the uh cp slam uh skip we at least saw like the tech behind it so you guys got to saw uh, see both of the differences with them, but now we're coming to the hardest part of the game And the reason it's the hardest part is because it's completely random uh, In this part I will either die almost die or I will get a skip and there is nothing that I can really do to change it <laughs> This is definitely like one of the most this is definitely the most punishing part I think of like most of the categories that I've seen just because like it again pun unintended But like everything's kind of out of your control at this point. You do just have yeah. to pick a god and pray 
you can manipulate yourself into better positioning to make it less likely for something to go wrong, but you can be doing this perfectly and still have stuff go wrong. So fingers crossed that nothing bad happens. Um, if you want to explain this, uh, Bucky. Yeah, uh, fortunately though, I want to add, uh, you're much, you're much higher leveled than you would be in any percent. So if something does go wrong, you can, you can, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna recover. I can recover a little more easily. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so anyway, uh, story-wise, where we're at is the thing in our head is being contained here in that giant hedron right there, and the hiss is coming to, you know, check it out and possess it. So we have to cleanse these six siphons, and this is like, I don't know, a 10-second interaction uh, that we want to be doing with all these enemies running around. Uh, he got the first one there, very nice. Uh, and the key here is really to just do things fast and precisely. And the second one looks pretty yeah. safe. All right. And the enemies around here do like a lot of damage too. And I think they're pretty tanky from what I remember. Like they're pretty high. Yeah, level. this is, so. this is the... We're way under leveled here. Even like with our yeah. upgrades, we're still pretty low. Yeah, this is the epitome of uh, under leveled. <laughs> This sort of harkens back to like the. Oh, oh I'm gonna be goodness. slow. <laughs> you saw that? Jeez, that's a lot of health just gone. All right. These first three siphons went pretty well, but this fourth one is up in the air. No, I'm not gonna uh, get this one. Uh oh. Oh, that's come on! No! Oh. Okay, that's fine. No. That's fine. Was like we can one save pixel. this. Maybe save this. Just gotta mm. be very, very careful. This is ominous. There we go. Nice. Playing with fire here. All right, we're good. We're good. Do. Yes. Hi. How's it going? Would you say things are going out of control? <laughs> I would. I would say that very much. Especially since, uh, for some reason, launch here is really broken. But that's okay. It's all right. Everything is fine. That's another guy down. And see, this is an example of like the combat is, you know, we kill that guy, he drops the health. Now we're fine. We're totally fine. Nothing bad's happening at Bloody all. screen, you're fine. There we go. Also, those are the guys with the uh, the rocket launchers that zoom, these like home in on vein. you. Oh, these are just the goodness. bane of your existence, I feel it. Yeah. That's my, le this is my least favorite part of the entire game. If this game didn't have this one section, I would be grinding <laughs> this game probably every single day for the rest of my life. That's how much I like the speed run and how much I hate that section. But we're okay, we didn't die. That's important thing. Sometimes there you get hit by both uh, the levitating enemy and you also get hit by one of these guys. But uh, thankfully that didn't happen. Oh, I actually spawned another guy's in. That's not great. Usually much, uh -oh. much safer. Uh, uh, all right, we're fine. Yeah, very nice. Nice. Again, this is always terrifying so much every single time. I have seen many a run die to this section here. It's just an absolute heartbreaker when it happens too. It's I mean, like it's there's. Just a, it's just a yeah, rite of right. passage. I feel. Your run has to die here before you can like get a decent time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would say that um, in any percent, I would say other than uh, once I get past the threshold <laughs> mission that I mentioned earlier, I would say almost 95% of my runs after that die here. That makes sense. <sighs> but there we go. All right. We are now in uh, the end game, um, which is not the, this is not the ending. This is not the ending. Don't go away just yet. This, this is fake. This is fake. Don't stop the timer. This We're is not, normally gonna do our where... Shout -outs. On like the early <laughs> marathon runs of the game, the runner would like freak out and be like, "Oh no, mm -hmm. what's happening? What's wrong Where did my, my audio computer? go? Yeah, what's wrong with my computer?" Yeah, and then everybody's um, like, oh, "Okay." Everyone like freaks out and goes, "Oh my gosh!" But uh, we don't do that here. This is a fake ending that the game pulls on you. Um, as you can see, uh, this is not supposed to happen uh, with most normal credits, but it's supposed to happen here. Um, but yeah, it's a nice little break, especially because whenever you're like doing an any percent run, you have like three or four more minutes left. And like after that entire section, like your heart beats like at 150 beats a second. So having this kind of like 30 second break is fantastic. Um, it's also faster R IGT than doing RTA. 
because uh, RTA like would literally have us have. close our game and then reopen it. Oh, interesting. But here we go. The hardest part of the game is uh, doing basic office tasks. Um, I, everyone like always wonders like that. what happens when people get possessed by the hiss and like what's going on in their head. Um, I truly believe that they show like the most nightmare scenario for the person constantly. And Jesse's is to be a boring office drone. It's just an honest living, dude. Like seriously. Mm -hmm. Man, what a downfall though. From janitor's assistant all the way up to the director, and then now we're back to being the intern. She has fallen pretty far. Yeah, this is a nice little section though. It's just a uh, kind of, you know, very chill thing, you know, clean up some coffee mugs, scan some form, pick up some mail, ignore the fact that our mind's being taken in over by the his, you know, just normal office nine to five stuff. This is like Definitely. the part of the run where if somebody was playing with a heart rate monitor, you would like see it slowly go down after Solaris. <laughs> yeah. Are you sure you are? I'm also gonna try to do some... Game. Let's see if I, I can do some fake news. What I'm doing. All right, uh, I some fake news. That's not this one. Yes, oh, I did. Got it. Well, I, I wanted to jump anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so normally okay, it has a spawn. Enough. Normally it has a spawn right there. Um, however, there's something called fake news. We call them fake news because what's going on is if you mantle into cutscenes, it tries to drag you over um, from where you're like the cutscene spawns you to where you're mantling to, and we just happen to land right before the uh, collision loads in for the level. So thankfully we don't get stuck out of bounds, but we just end up right there. It saves zero time. In fact, I actually lost time doing that one, but I just wanted to show it off. Um, Try it again. But it's really funny. <laughs> so show the one that maybe saves time. No, this one doesn't save time at all because you can run there no, in time to pick up the mail. But yeah, this one would almost save time if it was like a slightly faster, but sadly it does not. We've been invaded. Yeah, we'll it's just still do this one more time. Yeah, Easy. we got it again. Nice. nice. Hey. Also, uh, he's he's okay. He's, he's fine. He he's perfectly oh. okay. Perfectly fine. Yeah, we've yet to find a useful application for that trick. We'll fight this. Because mm -hmm. it's very specific. A way to push them out. Also, there's Ati. Ati's great. Yeah, we got our gun again. So now we are the director again. And um, this is basically just like saying that like, A, even though uh, Polaris is dead, there's still a piece of her that's in Jesse's head to protect her. So that's kind of what we're activating. And Jesse, you know, is a badass who is the, you know, main character so she has a lot of yeah. uh yeah she has a lot of plot armor in this game like a lot dead i can't feel you i can't this Man, i think this is the last trip along. through the ocean view motel here as well there's something we i can into. feel it but i don't know what now we are in the end game and i have seen the future and it is red um, fair warning, if you have like uh, discomfort with eye strain, I recommend looking away for four minutes because I know whenever I go through this section and I kind of like look at something else that's like not red, it like actually hurts my eyes. So just a recommendation yeah, there if you guys are... Uh, other saturations. Yeah, um, there's one more big skip here in this section. Um, normally at any percent we would be done. However, um, there are post game bosses that we have to do. And along with that, you're also able to return to do side quests later on. So we've actually left another boss uh, to do later. We've got two but, bosses. Right? Yeah, I was gonna yep. say you have two. Right? Two bosses, yeah. So right now we are doing some uh, dashing we're basically skipping multiple fights doing this which is really nice and uh normally the game like puts all the enemies at like level 30 so most of the enemies in this game are between one and six and now they're 30 but the cool thing about it is jesse gets powered up as well by the board so this is kind of like I, the section where it's like you're like the super badass going on yeah everything's but, a one shot um, kill pretty much yeah um, but that was like the third island skip, and this is now what we call Dylan's skip because there's just a hole here. And we can just, once again, fly out and dash to the end of the game. Yep. And I totally have never missed that on World Record Pace, ever. It's never, ever yeah, happened. Never happened. That's another rite of passion. 
But there we go. We found Dylan. We've cleansed him of the hiss, and we basically have shut off the hiss from coming into the oldest house. And the cool thing about this as well is we get an outfit change now. Yay, we beat the game. Mm hmm. Well, still not more exactly. To do. Yes. Uh, it's still a mess, and Jesse is a very hard working boss. That was it. But here we yeah, go. So first, we have to get a mission from Emily here. Yeah. Uh, Tomasi, our friend from earlier, as in literally like an hour ago, uh, is back and up to no good. So we have to go and teach him a lesson, I guess. Yeah, so the very first boss of the game is also technically designed as the last boss of the game. I mean, Which is we could neat. do them earlier, but yeah, fair. Right, and then we are going to be going back to logistics. This is probably like the best one. Um, fair warning, this is the hardest boss in the game, like no joking. It's a very difficult fight, has a lot of adds to it, has a lot of awkwardness with your pull, with your launch. Um, so if we do die here, I'm going to uh, basically just skip it and go on to the last part. Um, but yeah, so this is the oh, hardest yes. boss. Like, You're going to die though. Oh, I appreciate it. Uh, we both know that's like <laughs> not 100% true, but we can at least hope. So, I was gonna say, I've seen uh, you practice this guy and he seems tough. Definitely yeah. seems tough. Yeah, he is tough. Thankfully, we have Pierce. Pierce makes this fight infinitely easier. Uh, this is another one of those fights that's like the boss isn't the problem as much as the ad. Yeah, and not the good kind yeah, of ads where it's sense. like we get revenue, we make money from it. It's like the we're just gonna ruin your entire day. <laughs> yeah, yep, yeah, exactly. And does he have like any additional attacks in this form, or like? Does he operate nope. on the same sort of like throw mechanic or does he just, he just do a lot of damage? He has a shield. That's that's the only difference. I think. Oh, oh okay. and he's tougher. Like more HP. Yeah, he's taking those pierce shots like a champ. <laughs> he does seem like he's being like kind of, kind of nice right now. Yeah, commentator's curse. Oh, okay, we're good. Hey, there we go. let's go. There we go. Oh. I was close. That was a little close. Yeah. Um, another thing is, you, not only do you have those enemies that are like floating towards us, we also get more enemies, um, including the invisible enemy that will one shot you that you cannot see whatsoever. So, thankfully, uh, cool. that went that went okay. That went good enough. <laughs> but let's go. I'm I'm really happy with that fight. But yeah, all right, we are uh, on our way to the final boss. Do you want to explain this section, uh, Bucky or Cosmic? Yeah, so our final boss here is Molt 1. Uh, we order this one last because this is probably harder than Tomasi, to be honest. Um, I wouldn't say that, but it's it's a lot of work. It, yeah, I mean, this is the one that, I mean, it's gave me more trouble than Tomasi personally, but... Yeah, uh, so we have to come down here and speak to Underhill, who's giving us a mission that involves doing a whole bunch of crap that we're not it going to bother so with, because so we're going to do a skip called Air and Bliss, and that involves coming down here and hitting a death barrier. Yep, like that, so we go here. And oh no, yeah, we died, we, but don't worry, this is like intended. Also, because sometimes the uh, boss does actually um, crash th the game, uh, if you leave it open too long, I'm gonna do a quick little reset here to uh, just kind of refresh it. This game does have an issue with uh, memory leakage, where for whatever reason, it just likes to leak uh, memory, and that causes a lot of crashes. Um, thankfully, yeah. we are allowed to reset the game. Otherwise, I think me and Bucky would be losing like 80% of our like runs to this. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be here right now. Okay, I'll just say that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's really bad. But yeah, so we hit the triggers that we need. Again, we could like literally fly to the end of the game pretty much anywhere we want if we didn't have to hit triggers. But now that we've hit all the proper triggers, I'm gonna go grab this over here. Uh, yeah, just... and like, like I said, hitting that death barrier was intentional as an intentional death because for whatever reason that spawns the boss in here. So now we just have to clip out and uh, fly directly to the chamber he's in. 
Which is a ways down, it seems. Yeah, and there's really not very many tricks in this game where it's like trying to pretend like something is low or high. Like this is pretty accurate to like, you know, where you are in the world is, is where you are in the map design. Okay. All right, and then we should be landing right about here. Yep, there it is. And we have skipped a bunch of the game. So thankfully- Yeah, I don't even remember what those errands were. We have to like find all these mold pieces to get immunity and then navigate through a huge mold section just to fight yeah. this guy. Yeah, who has time for that? Just fight the guy. Uh, and he has three tentacles, all of which can attack you uh, and do a ton of damage. As well, or on top of that, we also have all of these like plants that will just blow up and oh my oh, god. Uh, time is going to be coming up here in a second, by the way. Yeah, time's coming up. Right as we kill this boss. And time. Very nice. Awesome. Well done. Dude, I was Genius. like, where did his HP go? <laughs> yeah, that pierce was really, really putting in work along with like... I think and along with that, there's also these mold things that will fall down onto it and do more damage. So that really helps out as well. But yeah, that was control all bosses. Uh, very happy with how that run went. We had some weird stuff happen, but that's all right. You know, it's it's this game is is it's gonna be weirder than usual, as like that's the opening line, and that explains the speed run. But um, thank you everybody for watching. Ecdysis, thank you for having me on. Um, always glad to do runs here. If you want to check out more of my content, I'm gonna be doing this game and the any percent category and like. Psychonauts 2, which I did last week as well. Um, if you want to follow me, you can follow me at twitch.tv slash demonic robots. Um, if you want to learn the game, we do have a control discord. We have a bunch of runners in there who will be glad to sit down and show you any glitches you need to, including myself and Bucky. So if you want to learn a cool game, this is a good one for it. Yeah, um, I do just want to say like the, the control community from my interactions with them, they're all like a lot of really good people. And uh, the devs as well are, are pretty supportive of the runners of this game. And uh, it's I think there's pretty much like no better time to get into it than like right now. So definitely pick it up. It's a, it's a great game. And I, I thoroughly enjoyed my casual playthrough and the runs are really awesome to watch. So I want to thank you again, Demonic, for having me on, dude. Oh, of course. Feel free to plug yourself as well. Uh, if you want to catch me on Twitch, it's uh, twitch.tv slash DECosmic and YouTube is DECosmic Runs. Awesome. Um, and again, if you want to check out Bucky, uh, Bucky, why don't you plug yourself too? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All righty then. I'm going to pass it back over to Ecdices. <laughs> All right, thank you for the run of control. You pretty much beat me to all the points I usually make at the end there, so thank you for doing the run, Demonic. And it was a fun run to be able to show you on control. Uh, that being said, though, we're about wrapping up our episode of Speedrun Some of the Crypt for tonight. I hope that you all enjoyed the spooky hotfix. We're here every other Wednesday, bi weekly show. Uh, so we'll be back in about two weeks. As well, we also have a Halloween hotfix coming up at the end of the month, so I hope you'll enjoy that as in addition. Uh, if you do enjoy the show, I'm McDysis. I host all these. I kind of get all the stuff set up. So if you like me, you can check me out. I'm somewhere down here. You can find that. Uh, in addition, tomorrow is going to be the first step with Back from Blood at 7 p.m. Eastern. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day and or night, and see you next time.